Hey guys, this is Ed Rowe. Today we are going to be building this entire React admin dashboard from scratch. It will be a fully fledged complete app using enterprise level industry standard packages. What we are going to start off with is we're going to start by building these data tables using the amazing Material UI data grid, which is fully customizable has lots of options and you can customize it to whatever you want to do. So if you take a look, we have all these, we have different access levels where we can put, we can customize different parts of the row and the data. We can make checks as well. We can go in, we can have our own columns. We can change the columns. The users can go in, find whatever columns they want. They can filter it by let's say age 42. And now they can have items of filtration right there. You can remove that. You can change the density. You can go and make it compact and com comfortable. You can even export as well. Then we can go to invoice balances. We can have the checks as well, and you can put different pieces of data as well. And you can do so much with this data grid table. After that, we're going to go to our profile form, which is a fully fledged form. And we're going to be using Formic and Yup validation to achieve this complex. This is also going to have validation right out of the box. It's going to make it so easy for us to change. So anytime you touch it, you go out, you have required validation. And then you also have email. If you don't put the proper email, you're going to have correct, incorrect um, validation for invalid emails. And that's the same thing with numbers. If it's not correct, it's going to tell you. Then we can go to our calendar app. Oh, this is an amazing app. As well, this is going to be using full calendar and we are going to be able to add events. You can add the event. It'll pop up here. You can move these events as well. You can even delete the events, go back and you can also check the week, day and the list view as well. And from here, we can go to the FAQ page and this is the React accordion or material UI accordion that you can use so you can create any type of frequently asked questions page. And then finally, we're going to use a library called Nivo, which is an amazing chart library that you can customize to any kind of need. And it by out of the box looks very nice. So we have a bar chart, we have a pie chart, line chart, and a geography chart. So these are incredible looking charts. And I highly recommend these packages for this application. Finally, we are going to be putting it all together and building a complete dashboard with charts and information using Material UI and React. I'll show you how to build this setup with the CSS grid. And we, as, we also will be able to change from dark mode to light mode and vice versa. And I'll show you how to structure your theme to easily modify and have ready to use colors and typographies. This tutorial will be dedicated to both beginners who are looking to practice their project building skills or who want to place this into your portfolio for future employers. And also this video is dedicated to more experienced developers who are looking to build a dashboard using enterprise level industry standard packages. As an industry expert and a front end tech lead, I will be teaching you React and React context about best practices and how to architect a proper React file folder structure like a true professional. Now let's get started coding by opening up a new directory. So I'm in VS Code. You can use whatever code editor you prefer but I highly recommend VS Code. If you go into the extension section, you can install something called Prettier, which formats your code automatically in a very nice to easy style. So if you ever see any changes that are happening on screen when I'm saving it, that's because Prettier is automatically formatting the code. And from here, I'm gonna go into my terminal and I'm gonna write MPX create react app space, I'm gonna call it react admin. So create react app automatically creates the boilerplate template that we need for react. So it'll set up everything for us. So let's wait till that finishes. All right. Once that's installed, I'm going to change into the directory of the folder we just created, and I'm going to open that up into a new window. Here I'm going to install material UI. So if you go to the material UI website, they have a link over here but I'll type it in for you just in, just in case you don't want to go to the website. So I'm going to write MPM I at M E Y slash material at emotion slash react 
at emotion slash style. And then from there, we're going to install the data grid, which is the table of material UI, which is bundled separately. So we have to add this one separately. So at MUI slash X dash data dash grid. And also we're going to add the icons that material UI have. And this is also separate from the main package. So MUI slash icons slash material. And then we're also going to act add react router. So we're going to add react router DOM at six. Then we're also going to add a React React Pro sidebar. So this is a package that allows us to create a sidebar easily. And then also we're going to add Formic, which is the form library, and Yup as the validation library. And then finally, and from there I'm going to be installing Full Calendar, which is the package library for our calendar app. Then we're going to go to the Full Calendar docs website. And they have quite a bit of packages that they have to install. So I'm going to write that down all for you. So at full calendar slash core, at full calendar slash day grid for the day grid view, at full calendar slash time grid for time, at full calendar slash list for the list view. And finally, we're going to add the Nevo charts. So if I go to the Nevo charts, the way this works is that you go to Nevo, you can add whatever charts you want to, you're going to have to go in and add each one separately. So you're going to have at Nevo slash core and at Nevo slash whatever chart that you want. So here we're going to add a few of the libraries. So we're going to do at Nevo slash core at Nevo slash pi at nivo slash line at nivo slash bar at nivo slash geo. So these are all the packages we are going to be installing. And then once those are installed, we're going to go to our source directory and we're going to be deleting some files. So we're going to be deleting setup tests, report web vitals, logo SVG, app.test.js and app.css. Delete all those. Then we're going to go to index.js. We're going to be deleting the last tag. We're going to be deleting report web vitals. Save that. We're going to go and delete our header, like so, and delete app CSS and logo information imports. And from here, we're going to make a few changes. We're going to change the uppercase A from class name to lowercase. And we're going to go to index.js and we're going to import browser router from React Router DOM. This will allow us to use React Router and set up routes. And we're going to wrap our app around Browser Router. From here, we're going to go to our index.css file, and we're going to go to Google Fonts. So this is a place where you can find a lot of Google Fonts that are free to use, and we're going to search up a font called Source Sans Pro. This is a very nice sans serif font that's an alternative to Roboto and Open Sans, but it's very convenient. So we're going to go down, we're going to add a regular 400, 600, and a 700. And we're going to go to the at import to grab the URL, and we're going to go back to our code, and we're going to paste it. And then we'll be able to access the fonts from there. And also we're going to go HTML body root dot app and the class name that we haven't added yet dot content and we're going to set this height to a hundred percent width to a hundred percent and then we are going to add dot app and we're going to put display flex position relative this will set up our CSS file page. From here, we're going to add a font family of Source Sans Pro and Sans Serif. So our default font would be Source Sans Pro. And then we're also going to edit some of the scroll bar because we're going to have to style the scroll bar for it to fit in the style of the website. So we're going to do WebKit scroll bar like so. 
set the width of 10 pixel. Then we're going to set the track. This will style the track and we're going to set a slash web kit scroll bar track like so. I'm going to set that a background of E0, E0, E0 like so. Then we're going to go down. I'm going to set the handle. It's going to be similar to what we did before except WebKit slash scroll bar slash thumb. And then we're going to set that background as 888 like so. And finally, the last thing is going to be handle on hover when we hover over the scroll bar. So we're going to set dash web kit scroll bar thumb and then hover like so background should be a 555 like that. So this will style the scroll bar so it doesn't feel out of place. And then from here, we're going to create a new folder. We're going to call this data. Data like so. And I'm going to create a mock data JS file. And what you can do is I'm going to copy and paste this, but in the description, there is a link to the mock data section. So you can copy and paste it as well. And then we're also going to add one more data file mockgeofeatures.js. So this is specifically for the geography, geography chart, which you can copy and paste. And the reason why you need this, this is a very long file, but the reason why you need this is that Nevo charts requires you to set this up. So you have the geography, the world map basically to be loaded in for the chart. And from there, once we have our data set up, the next thing we want to do is set up our file and folder architecture. But before we do that, let's talk about how you would organize your code and why you are doing this. So the whole purpose of organizing a code base is very simple. It's to easily access the files and folders that you're looking for at any given time without having a very complicated nested file folder structure that's difficult to navigate. So there is a lot of issues with a very complicated code base. Sometimes you end up situations where you have folders within folders within folders, and that makes it very difficult. Your life becomes very difficult to find what you're looking for and find what you're working on, especially when you need to navigate to two files at the same time because they're connected in some kind of way. So there's this idea called the ducks pattern. Basically, it's a fancy way of saying you should organize your code base by features. So in this case, if you look at our app, we can organize it via dashboard right here. This is the dashboard component. This is the dashboard layout. So you have all the files and the data relevant to this page in that folder. So it's very easy to understand, hey, I'm looking to work on this particular page. You go to this folder. That makes it very easy to live with. There are other components that make it more complicated. For example, the sidebar and the app bar. These two things, exist throughout the entire application. So that means these two components cannot be organized via a particular page, but we can add like a folder called maybe like global and they would be accessible through the global folder. And you can find anything that's global related into this folder. What you want to avoid is when you have a bunch of components that you go, Hey, this is a dashboard. I'm going to create a folder. I'm going to call this the stats component. And then we're going to call this another one. And you're going to start nesting and nesting all these files inside it. It makes for a very difficult user experience or a developer experience, especially. And that is not something you want. So you want to keep it simple. You want to keep it what people call flat as possible, meaning less nested folder without it becoming an extremely long list. So if you have like a hundred folders all right here as very flat, that's also a problem because you can't find what you're looking for. So you want to keep it as a balance between nested versus flat. The very good medium to have both of those qualities. So as an example for this one, this website is very simple in terms of the way you would architect it, but let's give an example. So 
let's create a folder called components. So this is kind of a misnomer, but when you have a components folder, this is a file folder where you're sharing components. So any components that are being used in multiple locations, for example, this geography chart is going to be used in multiple locations right here and right here. Because they're in two different spots, we create a components folder that will use both of those. And then we'll also create a scenes folder. Now this is more straightforward. This is based on the page that you're working on. So let's create dashboard like so. And in here, we're going to create a file called index.jsx. So this represents everything that's going to be on this page. And then we'll also create a new folder called global. And I mentioned as before, we're going to add the app bar, which is the top bar. We're going to call it top bar instead because it's more explicit, more understandable. Top bar, JSX. And then there's also this, which will be the nav bar, but we're going to call this the sidebar to make it more easily understood, the difference between those two. And then from here, we would, in the future, we're not going to create it right now. We would have a folder for each of these pages so that anytime I'm working on profile form, I can go straight to this file or folder. Have this, let's set up our components. So const sidebar equals arrow function. We're going to return div sidebar like so. And we're just going to export default side. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to copy and paste this into top bar. Select all of them. And oh, by the way, the way I selected all of them, I just highlighted sidebar and I pressed command D until I selected all of them. And now I can edit all of them at once. So we get top bar like that. And now we go index. We're going to call this, we're going to copy it again. And we're going to call this dashboard all of this, we're going to close a lot of the tabs just because it's getting messy. So we're going to create a new file and we're going to call this theme.js. Actually, I want this to be in the source directory, not scenes. So theme is going to be the setup to get all the colors and the types of, or the typography of the website. And we're going to allow this to be light and dark mode. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import create context from react. We're also going to import use state and use memo. And then we're also going to import create theme from material slash styles like so. So we will be using these to establish our theme setup for the entire website. So the first thing we're going to create is color design token. So basically this will be all the colors that we're going to be using. So there's going to be three colors that we want to use. It's going to be, this is just a gray color. And then we're also going to add a primary dark blue color. And then a green accent. Then we're going to add a red accent. Oh, forgot the hash. And then we're going to add a blue accent. And then what we're going to do is I want you to go to the extension and we're going to find an extension called Tailwind Shades. So what this will do is when we have just these colors, it's a very limited in terms of if sometimes you just want a, that same color except just a little bit lighter or a little bit darker. So what this will do is allow us to create a lot of the shades of that particular color easily with the very one click option. So if you look at this, once you install this, we can say Command K Command G if you're on a Mac, same thing with Control K, Control G with PC or other computers. So we can do Command K, Command G. And now what it's doing is going to create all the shades. So this is a lighter version of this one, this one, this one. So it gives you lots of different options just from the same color. We're going to do it for each of these. 
command kg, command kg, command kg. So this will provide us with all the colors and the shades that we are going to be using. And we're going to create a variable called export const tokens. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass in a mode. So this mode will represent light or dark mode. So this is, will be a function. And we're going to export an object from this. So if I go here, I'm going to cut this out, all of this. I can click it. Okay. And if the mode is equal to dark, we are going to pass in as a ternary operator. So if the mode is dark, we're going to pass in this object that we just created. Otherwise, we'll be creating the light one as well. So as you can see, we have these colors. So this is going to be, we're just going to type this gray, change this black to primary, change this green to green accent. And then go to the next one, call this red accent. And then this one will be blue accent, like so. And there you go. Now you have a full color scheme of tokens that you can use depending on the mode. So this will automatically allow us, if the mode is dark, we're going to be using these colors. And then we'll set up the light one as well. All right. And then from there, we're going to copy all of this to get our light mode. So we're going to copy this and we're going to use a little bit of a trick. We're basically going to invert all these colors the opposite direction. So what we're going to do first is we're going to select this. We're going to hit Command P or Control P depending on your PC type. And then we're going to do sort line descending. So it's just going to invert everything, but it doesn't actually change much. It doesn't change the code or what it's doing. So sort lines descending. We're going to do this for every single one. Sort lines descending. Command P, sort line descending. Command P, sort lines descending. Now from here, I'm going to go back to the top. I'm going to change all of these manually. It's a bit tedious. And what we can do is we're going to hold Option Command and press down so we can select more, all of them at once, and then Command Shift Left. So it selects all of these. So we're going to just copy this and we're going to go down and do the same thing over here, Command Shift, and then paste it. So now we have everything inverted. Maybe there's a better way to do this, but this is the best option that I thought of. Oop, I kind of messed it up. So the red accent, we're going to paste that. Command shift down, command shift left, and paste it. So now we have all the colors inverted. Oh, I messed up the green accent. So I want to get that. And let me double check, I got everything. Yeah. And then there's actually one color that I find that didn't work very well and it's going to be primary right here, 400. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually add a color instead of this one. And I did this just by looking at the website. So this one actually works better. And now that we have our like, color set up, we're going to go to the bottom and we're going to go and add the material UI theme settings. So now we have our colors established. Now we just got to set up Material UI to use those colors. So we're going to do export const theme settings. And like with the tokens, we're going to add a mode as our function. And we're going to go const colors equals tokens mode. So basically what this is doing is it's giving us returning whatever colors or tokens depending on the mode. So if it's light, it's going to give us this object. If it's dark, it's going to give this one. That's what this right here is doing. And then we're also going to return an object. And this will be the material UI settings that we want. So we're going to have 
palette. And inside that palette will be an object. We're going to set mode to mode like so. And like we did before, we're going to have if the mode is equal to dark, we're going to have a ternary. And we will give it an object. And for this one will be the palette for dark modes. So we're going to have primary. And in the primary, we have the main of colors.primary500. Since 500 is the main colors that we're using. And then sec, the next thing we're going to do is secondary. Oh, need to spell that correctly. Secondary main colors.green accent has 500. And then we're going to have a neutral. Let me add a comma neutral and we're going to give it dark colors dot gray 700 main colors dot gray 500 and light colors dot gray 100 and then finally we're going to set the background and that's going to have a default color of colors dot primary 500 so this will be the official setup for dark mode. And then we also got a setup for light mode as well. And I think I have, oh yeah, I messed it up. So right here is gonna be the second one. And we're gonna copy everything inside this for the light mode. but we're going to change it up. So I manually picked the colors that are looking good for the light mode. So green accent, 500, gray, 700, 500. Those are fine. And the background default, this will be a manual color. I found none of the colors worked well. So this will be a very light gray. Generally do, do not want to use white because that's too bright. So you want a little bit of a gray. And that's a very neat trick to note that you generally don't want to use pure white, pure black most of the time, unless it's for text. And then let's save it. And then we got typography as the next thing that we're going to set up. And we're going to set up a font family of Source Sans Pro Sans Serif and dot join. So since we have text, we're just going to join it. This is an easy way to join the two. Font size is going to be 12. So this is the default font for Material UI. And then from here, we're going to set up each one of the fonts. So we're going to set font family for each one. And we're going to copy and paste this because we're going to be using the same font for everything. We're going to set the font size to 40. And we're going to do this for all the heading tags. So H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. We just need to add it now. This is going to be 32. H3 is going to be 24. Make sure you have the commas here. H4 is going to be 20. H5 is going to be 16. H6 is going to be 14. And there you go. These are our default font typography. And whenever, whenever we're using the material UI components, such as the typography component, if we use a variant of H1, it's going to give us this font size. Same with everything else. And then finally, we're going to do, we're going to create a React context for the color mode. From here, we can do export const color mode context, and we're going to create a context and pass in toggle color mode. 
So this is a function that will allow us to change the color or like the function will allow us to provide this function throughout the entire app so that we can have a trigger for this. And then we're going to have export const use mode. Actually, let me make sure that M is capitalized. And this is going to do a couple things. So first we're going to set the mode mode set mode using use state and we're going to start with dark so this will be the state that's going to be storing the the condition or the state of the dark or light mode Once we have that, we're going to create export const use mode. So this will do a number of things. The first thing we want to do is set the state. So we're going to set const mode set mode equals use state. And we're going to pass it in dark. So this will hold the state of whether it's dark or light. And we're going to create another function called color mode and we're going to set this use memo we're going to pass in the function an arrow function like so and we're going to give the toggle color mode that we established and we're going to have this set mode as previous arrow function if previous is equal to oops light we're going to set this to dark and if it's not equal to light we're going to set it to light so this is the actual functionality of the app or of the dark and light mode so it gives us those conditions and then finally we're going to set the theme using use memo And we're going to pass in create theme, theme settings, mode, comma, mode, like this. So what a little bit of a handful, but basically what this is doing is creating the theme for material UI. And we're passing in the mode into our theme settings that we created. So we're passing in the mode here. So that gives us an object of the proper format depending on the dark or light mode that's what this is doing and then finally we're going to return theme and color mode for us to use so by doing all this this allows us to basically create a context so that we can have easy access to the condition of whether it's dark or light and allow us to provide a function that changes it as well. And we will add that function of changing it to this button right here. I know that was quite a bit, but this will allow us to use the theme and use colors that we need and we can set them dynamically based on light or dark mode. So there's a few things we still need to add is we're, we're gonna go to import or we're gonna go to the app.js and we're gonna import a few things. We're gonna import the color mode context and use mode from the file we just created. And then we're going to import CSS baseline and theme provider from at MUI slash material. And the baseline is going to reset our CSS to the defaults that will probably need and theme provider is going to provide that the ability to pass in the themes into material UI. And from here, we're going to use our hook. So we're going to do const theme color mode equals use mode that we created. So we have access to the theme and the color mode now, and we're going to pass in to our return. We are going to create friends 
and we're going to pass in color mode context.provider and we're going to pass in the value of color mode. So this is a way to set up our color context. So now we have access it, to it everywhere. And then from here, we're going to add the theme provider so that material UI has access to it as well. And then wrap our app around it. And then from there, we're going to add the CSS baseline like that. So this will reset the CSS to defaults and we don't have to do much work because Material UI provides this. And then finally, we're going to add one more thing. We're going to add the main section and we're going to give this a class name of content, the CSS class that we added before. Oh, and let's get rid of this semicolon. And that's pretty much it for the setup for the theme. The one thing we're missing is still this button on here, light and dark mode, but we'll get to that shortly. And from here, we're going to create the top bar. The top bar is this section that involves the search and these four icons. Now, if you want to take a look how we are setting up the CSS for this, we can use a tool or extension called Pesticide, which is in Chrome and Brave Browser, maybe Firefox, but you can see the layout of this. So basically there is a div around this entire area and we're gonna have Flexbox section this off into two sections, this section and this section. And we're gonna do space between to represent that. And from there, we're gonna go back to our code and we're gonna place our top bar component inside the main component. And we are going to make sure we import that as well. So import top bar from dash scenes slash global slash top bar. And then we're going to go to our top bar component and we are going to be importing a number of things here. We're going to import a quite a few things. So we're going to start by importing box icon button use theme from at MUI material. We're going to import use context from react. We're going to import color mode context from theme and tokens as well. As you noticed, when I'm typing, sometimes the IntelliSense pops up. It helps dictate where it's coming from. So make sure to use that as well if you're possible. So if you look at input base, perfect. MUI material, I go down, I select it, and it types it for you. So not only does it improve your speed of development, but also it makes sure you don't have any bugs when it automatically does it for you. Then we're going to import a number of icons. So light mode outlined like so. So we're actually going to use the icon version like light mode outlined icon. So this is slightly more performant than the other way. It's just more code to write light mode outlined. And these icons are coming from the MUI material UI. So you can go MUI material icons and we go here and anytime you want an icon let's say i want an outline icon right here you can go in select this that copies it and you can just straight write this like that but what we're going to do is we're going to copy this and we're going to hand write all of them because i already have that set up there's six of these i'm going to change this to dark this one will be notifications Notifications. This one will be settings. This will be, let me change the E. This one will be person. And this last one will be search. So we're going to actually get rid of the outline for this one. So search. 
like that. And from here, we're going to use const theme and we're going to pass in use theme from material UI. So this grabs the theme. This is basically done in React context, but in material UI. So they allow you to have access to the theme provided. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass in colors, tokens, and theme.palette mode. So what this allows us to do is that anytime we want to use the color mode that's in material UI, we can grab it from use theme and we can pass it in the tokens theme that we've created. So this tokens right here. So anytime we use a color, it's going to automatically determine which color we're going to want. So if it's in dark mode, gray 500 is going to represent this color. But if it's in light mode, gray 500 is going to represent, well, in this case, this is the same thing. But let's say primary 400, this will be a different color from primary 400 right here. So hopefully that makes sense. And then from here, const color mode is going to use context, color mode, context. So we are going to be using this to allow us to toggle different states for the color mode. All right, and I'm going to wrap this and I'm going to add, actually, I'm going to just delete this and we're going to add box. So if you're familiar with material UI, the box component is basically like a div component, but it's very convenient because you can put CSS properties directly into the box component. So I can put display flex like so. So instead of writing CSS separately, we can write the CSS properties directly on this box component. Now there are some benefits and the downsides to this method. So when you write CSS like this, it is very convenient to write. When you develop and having the CSS properties exactly on the component makes life way easier and it helps you improve your development efficiency by writing things like this. And then you can have shorthands like P, which is padding, and we can set this to, for example, two. Now I'll say this, I really like this. I really like this setup. There is one downside is when you have this and you have lots of CSS properties, which does tap, does tend to happen quite a bit, you tend to have very long components. When you have long components, the option would be to break it out into more components. But personally, I think the benefit of having to write CSS or being able to write the CSS directly on the div or on the element that you're writing on helps it so much. And I really like this. So the box component allows you to write the CSS properties directly, but other components, let's say we're going to do icon button, which is something we'll use later. This one, you cannot write display flex like, like so. It doesn't pop up. It doesn't allow you to do that. So instead for other components, you use something called SX and then you write your CSS like this. This is more of the preferred way of material UI, but for the box component specifically, this allows you to write CSS properties directly on it, as opposed to the typical way, which is SX. But personally, I like when you have a box, I like writing the CSS props directly because that is very nice for convenient, especially when you do layouts. All right, and then let's save this. If you look here again, if I go back, as you can see, we split this into two. So we're going to create the search bar first. So we're going to write this as a comment and we're going to create a box component. And inside this box component, we're going to have multiple properties, display flex, background color, and we're going to pass in colors. So now we are using our theme. So now I can pass in the colors primary of 400. So it gives us that shade as we need. Border radius of three, three pixels. Let me add quotations. 
like so. And let me fix that. All right. So as you can see with the colors, we can just pass in the colors that we plan to use. The reason why I don't like using the material UI theme is because in this case, we have more shades. Sometimes I need more than just these main colors. This allows you to specify much more shades if I ever need them. And as you can see, this is very convenient that you see this inbox and you have the CSS properties directly on it. So anytime you come in, you know this div is exactly these CSS properties as opposed to style components where you have a situation where you where you can extract it, let's say style box. So now you have, you put the style properties in here, you put everything in here. So it's very inconvenient in terms of both writing it and looking at it at, at times. But I'll, I'll, I'll do say sometimes it does look cleaner in terms of organization, but it's up to you. So the next thing we want to do is import in base, input base from material UI. And this is going to give us an input section for the search. And we're going to give it MX at margin left of two. That's what ML represents as a shorthand and flex of one. And we're going to set a placeholder of search. Now, if I save this, go back to our app, that represents this guy right here. And then we have icon button over here. And we're going to pass in search icon over here. And we're going to do type equals button like so SX equals P equals one. Now this is not going to have any actual functionality. We're not going to get to that because there's a lot of other things we are need to implement. And then from here, we're going to have the icons section, which represents the other half. And I'm going to get rid of icon button over here and we're going to create a box. This is going to have a display of flex as well. So this is going to have, if you take a look, this, outer container is flex. So you split this into two sections. This itself also has a flex. So these are four different items aligned to each other. So you're going to have to use display flex as well over here. So let me turn that off. So if we go back, go into our component, and we're going to have icon buttons like so. And we're going to, we're actually going to go and copy and paste. We have four of them. So one, two, three, four. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab each one of these. Let's actually start with notifications. So we're going to do the same thing for settings. So I'm just copying, pasting the icons and we're going to do the same thing for light, but the light mode is going to have some functionality. So if I go here, paste it, we can have our light, but we're going to pass in for icon button and on click. So we're going to pass in color mode dot toggle color mode. So this is the react context of the function that allows us to change from dark to light. And depending on the mode, actually theme dot palette dot mode. And if it's dark, we are going to want to show the dark mode icon. So I have the light, but let's change this one to dark. And then as the other conditional, if it's not dark, we're going to set the light mode outline icon. So we're going to paste it just like that. And now we have our proper conditionals.
that, we have the top bar set up. Um, but before we go to the next part, let's actually make sure everything is working. So I'm going to open up the terminal and I'm going to hit control, uh, control apostrophe if you want to open up the terminal. And from here, I'm going to run npm run start in our terminal. And this should open up. Let's ignore that. We're going to create a new tab. We're going to go localhost. Uh, and as you can see, we have an error imported as input base. So basically what happened was this should actually be input base instead of slash material. Save it. We have everything working. Perfect. Everything works well. We have light mode and dark mode. Perfect. All right. From here, I'm going to just move this down. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to import a bunch of components that are not made, except from sidebar. We're going to import a bunch of scenes so that we can set up the routes for these. These components will be created at a later time in the video, but I'm just going to have all this set up so it would be easy to look at. So we're going to do import sidebar from slash scenes global slash side sidebar. And then from there, I'm going to copy a bunch of these dashboard. I'm going to move this. And these will represent different pages of our website. So we're going to start with team. This will be the team page. Invoice. Let's actually select both of them and we can say invoices and we just change the lowercase then we're going to change contacts and change this to bar then form line like so I'm going to continue copying a few more of these. And this will be pi. Actually, I made a mistake. Make sure I grab that. That should be pi. FAQ. And this should be lowercase. And then geography. So these are all the imports that we have. And then I'm going to go down to our routes and I'm just going to copy this route and we're going to set up all the routes that we're going to have for the, our entire website. So we're going to have a route of team. Contacts. I wish there was a faster way to do this, but this is the best that I can think of. And then invoices, form, form, then bar, pi, and then line, And then FAQ, Q components. I actually need two more. There's going to be geography. Pass in geography. And there's actually one I just missed in the imports. So this is going to be calendar. Calendar. And if I go up, I need to import calendar. Calendar from scenes, calendar, like so. And there you go. These are all the routes. So for now, even those components don't exist, I'm just going to comment this out. 
I'm going to comment each one separately. And the reason why I'm doing this is so that I can show you later on when I uncomment it when we need this. So let's go over here. We're going to comment all of these guys out. We're going to keep sidebar. Perfect. And then from here, we're going to close the terminal so you guys can see more of the space. And I'm going to go back to the app file. And I'm going to start adding routes. So inside the main content file, we're going to add a bunch of routes. And I'm going to import routes from React Router DOM. Again, I'm using IntelliSense. We don't have this imported, but when I click it, as you can see, we have the import coming in. Very handy. And I highly recommend you guys use that. So we go back and we add routes like so. So we add path like that. And this one is going to represent an element of dashboard. So dashboard is going to come from the component that we have created. So instead of importing like that, we're going to import dashboard, not from icons material, because that's not what we want from scenes slash dashboard like so. So now this will set up our default route. Oh, and our route isn't defined. So that comes from react router DOM. So we want the route to be imported there. And from here, we're going to go inside our div, but above the main element, we're going to add sidebar like so. And we're going to go into our sidebar component now, and we're going to import a number of items. So we're going to import use state. Then we're going to import pro sidebar menu and menu item. So React Pro Sidebar is a nice little package that helps you build a side sidebar like this. If you take a look at the demo, and by the way, this is this link is in the description below. So React Pro Sidebar has all of these components, allows you to have sub menus, you can put background image, you can collapse it, things like that. So it makes it very easy. So with this, we can go down and we can also import one more thing from React Pro Sidebar, which is this styles file. So we're going to grab this styles link because we need this to import the styles from React Pro Sidebar. And then from there, we're going to import a number of items from Material UI. So box, icon, button, and then typography, use theme from at MUI material. And then we're going to import link. Let's use the IntelliSense import link from React Router DOM. So this allows us to have links when we click on the navigation items. So it takes you to the page that's relevant to what you're clicking. And then we're also going to import tokens from theme. And finally, we're going to import a bunch of icons. So I'm going to go back to top bar. I'm just going to copy one of these. And I'm just going to copy and paste quite a few of these because we're going to need a lot of icons. So from here, we're going to import home and then people, contacts, receipt. person calendar today help outline bar chart and I forgot to copy it over here bar chart then we're going to do pie chart
It seems like this one has outline outlined. So it's double. And then we go timeline. Menu. And finally, map. It's a lot of icons, but each navigation item requires an icon. So if you take a look at the final build, we have all these different icons for each of these. That's why we're importing all of this. And from here, we're going to set up some of the state that we need. So first thing is going to, we're going to set up the theme and the colors. So we're going to use use theme like we did before const colors equals tokens theme dot palette dot mode to give us the colors. And then finally, we're going to do is collapsed set is collapsed like so. And we are going to use state and we're going to set that to false. We're going to have another variable called selected and have set selected as the function. And we're going to set use state to dashboard. So is collapse is going to represent whether the sidebar will be collapsed or not. And then selected will represent which item we have been selected or what page we are currently at. So the first thing we want to do, is we're going to wrap this with parentheses. I'm going to delete this and go on the next line and we're going to put a box like so. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to add some CSS properties, but this is going to override some of the elements that we have inside React Pro sidebar because we can't really directly edit these. We can probably add another CSS class if you take a look on their documentation. If you want the custom style, you can write it before the import and maybe change some of the variables. But what we're going to do is we're going to do something easier and we're going to select some of the CSS in here directly. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and dot pro sidebar inner. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the background to colors dot primary 400. And I'm going to put in an important tag. So this will override the background. We're going to do the same thing with the icon wrapper. And we do not want an icon wrapper here. So we're going to set the background color to transparent. And we're going to set that as important to override it. Now, I usually don't like using important tags, but because we're overriding a library, we kind of have to. The next item is going to be pro inner item. And we're going to go and set padding. And we're going to use a shorthand notation. So it's five pixel at the top, 35 pixel to the right, five pixel to the bottom, 20 pixels to the left. And we're going to have that as important as well. And then we're going to go and set and dot pro inner item hover as well. And we're going to set the color and it's going to be eight, six, eight DFB. And we're going to set that as important. These are just colors. I just kind of eyeballed once I got the colors because none of the colors that we set at this theme would work. Pro menu item dot active. And we're going to set this as a color of number six, eight, seven, zero. F A and I'm going to set that as important. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to build is going to be this profile image and the name and the subtitle. So we're going to go after our menu item and we're going to say user and we are going to create a section where it's, if it's not collapsed, we are going to be showing this box and we are going to 
create another box with the image. So the image tag will exist here. And then we're also going to create another box after that. And this will be the typography of Ed row. And the second one of VP fancy admin. And with this, we're going to style this. So we're going to set margin bottom is going to be 25 pixel. We're going to set the display of flex, set it as justify content. Then we're going to set center and we're going to set align items center. And inside the image tag, we're going to have an alt tag of profile user. We're going to set a width of a hundred pixel along with the height of 100 pixel. And then we're going to go to source and we are going to add an image called user.png. I have not added this image yet, but I will be adding it. And we're going to get a pointer with a boiler radius of 50 percent all right so if i go to my public i'm going to be adding the assets and the user.png so this image is available on the github repo you can go find it i have a link below and that's what this source is linking to and from here we're going to also set this as text align so to center our text then we're going to set a variant of h2 we're going to set color equals colors dot gray 100 we're going to set a font weight of bold and we're going to style this with a sx tag and we're going to set this margin as 10 pixel zero 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 now I use a shorthand typically you could just do margin top and it seems like I have some kind of issue somewhere let's see ah okay so I have an equal sign here this should be a colon and if we save it now everything works I'm gonna close the terminal go back we're gonna continue on the typography I'm gonna see variant h5 and we're going to set this as color equals colors dot green accent. And we're going to set that as 500. Now let's take a look at our app. And as you can see, we have what we need. All right, that's good. I also noticed in my final build, I have this color right here. As you can see, this section behind the nav bar and the search. The colors are a little different. So there was a color that I did manually change and I just forgot to. So if you go to primary 400 right here, we want to change this color. Let me add that to 1F2A40. So if we save that, now we have the proper colors. This aligns the perfect. From here, now we can take care of the menu items. So if you go down below the user, and above the menu, we're going to create menu items. So we're going to create a box and we're going to give it a padding left of is collapsed. We're going to give it undefined if it's uncollapsed, but give it 10% of padding on the left if it is, if it's not collapsed. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a separate component for each item because there's a lot that will be needed. So we're going to go up and we're going to create a separate component and we're just going to call this item. 
and this item is going to take five different properties. So we're going to have a title, a two, icon, selected, and set selected. We're going to pass in theme equals use theme, so we don't have to pass this again. Const colors equals tokens theme dot palette dot mode. And what we're going to do is we're going to return menu item. And we're going to pass in typography. And also a link. The reason why we are doing this is so that we don't have to rewrite this code multiple times. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass an active is equal to if selected is equal to title. So if currently if we have the title that's selected, we're going to set that as active. And that's what menu item requires from React Pro sidebar. And then we're going to set a style of color, colors.gray100. We're going to go next and we're going to say on click equals set selected and we're going to set that as the title if it gets clicked and we're going to set icon is equal to icon save that so it reformats and then we're going to put the title as the typography and we're going to say two is equal to two like that So with these menu items, it's really nice with React Pro sidebar, you can pass in React Router DOM link into it that gives you the access to use React Router with the component that they built. So now if you go down, you can pass in item. Oops, let's fix this item like this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna be passing in a bunch of different things. So title dashboard two is going to be to the main page and then icon is equal to home outlined icon. And we're gonna set selected is equal to selected and then set selected equals set selected. Now what we're going to do is we're going to copy this down multiple times until we have enough. And we're going to be changing for each item. So we're going to go down and say manage team. And we're going to pass in team over here and change this to people outlined icon. We're going to go down. We're going to go to contacts information and we're going to pass in contacts and we're going to do oops, contacts outlined icon. We're going to go to invoice, invoices balances, passed in invoices and pass in receipt. We're going to go profile form slash form and we're going to say person we're going to go down we're going to add calendar calendar slash calendar and write calendar today outline icon we're going to go FAQ page slash FAQ. We're going to write help. And then we're going to go bar chart slash bar bar chart outlined icon. We're going to go pie chart slash pie. Pie chart. Oh, yeah, if I can get that correctly. Pie chart outline. Outlined icon. We're going to get line chart slash line. 
Don't worry, we're almost over. And we're going to say timeline, outline icon. And we're going to pass in one more, and this is going to be the geography chart. And this is going to be a geography. And this is going to be map. Like so. Now if we save it, we go back. Now we have a link to everything. And as you can see, the URLs are changing and updating as we go. We just don't have anything in those locations yet. Perfect. We're still missing these little tags. So let, we're going to add that. So let's go back and we're going to go to right below dashboard and right below dashboard. We're going to add a typography tag and we're going to write data for the first one. And we're going to add some custom or certain properties. So we're going to say variant equals H six color equals colors dot gray 300. And the SX equals a margin of 15 pixel at the top, zero on the right, five pixel on the bottom, 20 pixels on the left. So that's our data. Then we're going to go down and under invoice balances, we're going to add another one. And this is going to be pages. And then one more going to be charts. So that should be right up, right below FAQ page. And we're going to write charts for that section. So now if we save it, we go back. Now we have all our links. Perfect. And from here, we're going to go into our box. And now we're actually going to use pro sidebar. So what this is actually doing is right here, we set up the styling and we're selecting the pro sidebar that's in the child component of the box. And that's how we select it and change those colors. And in our pro sidebar, we're going to write collapsed and we're going to set that to is collapsed. And on the next line, we're going to set the menu and we're going to set icon shape to square. So that will give the menu icons a square. And the first thing we want to do is inside our finished one, we're going to add these items first. So the logo and the menu hamburger. So we're going to go in there our menu and we're going to write logo and menu icon. And in here, we're going to set menu item and we're going to set on click and we're going to set this as set is collapsed and we're going to make the is collapsed the not version so the opposite version so that when they click this this is going to uncollapse it and then from here i'm going to add a few more we're going to set an icon of if it is collapsed. We're going to set the menu outlined icon. Otherwise, we're not going to have a collapsed icon. So basically, when it is collapsed, we're going to set the menu outline icon. Otherwise, we're going to set it undefined. Now, this is not necessarily undefined because even if you collapse it, you'll still see the icon but we're going to manually input that there in the following statements. So the next thing we want to do is we're going to add a style, like an inline style using the style property. So we're going to set margin. We're going to use shorthand property. So 10 pixels at the top, zero pixels on the right, 20 pixels on the bottom, zero pixels on the left. And we're going to set color is going to be colors.gray100. And then from here, now we are going to show when it's not collapsed. So if it's not collapsed and 
we are going to show this box. So basically, this inside of here is going to represent when we're not collapsed. Whereas this one shows the hamburger when it is collapsed. So in a way, we're kind of hacking through or making a workaround for how this works because we wanted to show Adminis and this hamburger icon if it's not collapsed. But when it is collapsed, we're gonna show the hamburger icon. So that's why this is here. But if it's not collapsed, we're gonna be showing the typography of Adminis. So we go typography like so, and we're gonna write Adminis. And then we're also gonna show an icon button and that's going to have a menu outlined icon. Now, if you take a look, you can see right here, we haven't styled this yet, but when you collapse it, you still see the hamburger icon like that. So now with this, we're just going to do display flex and we're going to do justify, oops, justify content. And we're going to set that to space between. And then we're going to do align items center. And we're going to set a margin left of 15 pixel. Remember, ML represents a shorthand for margin left. And there you go. Now it's aligned. We can go like this. We hover over it. We get that. And we're also going to change the text. We're going to set this as variant H3 and set the color as colors.gray 100. If you remember variant H3, that represents a typography in the theme. Scroll down, we have H3, and it's a font size of 24. And then the icon button, we want this to have icon click. And now we're gonna do, we're gonna copy this same thing over here and we're just gonna replace that. It's so that you can have an on-click either way. And with finishing the sidebar, we're gonna close all these tabs. We're gonna go and create a header component. And this will represent this guy right here. So we have a header dashboard that's representing for each page. So let's just create a reusable component and that will exist in this components folder. Like I said, this is a shared components that will be used everywhere or in multiple places. So first we're gonna import typography from material UI. We're gonna import box, use theme. We're gonna go to the next line and we're gonna import tokens again from theme. And we're going to go const header. And you're going to return a box. So, and we're going to export default header. Now the header should take in two properties, which is going to be the title. And then we're going to have a subtitle as well. And we're going to pass in the colors. Like I mentioned before, const theme equals use theme. And we're going to pass in colors equals tokens theme.palette.mode and then on this we're going to add a typography and we're going to add title here and in the following line we're going to do another typography and we're going to pass in subtitle so in this box we're going to set margin bottom of 30 pixel. In the title tag, we're going to do a variant of H2 color of colors gray 100. We're going to set a font weight of bold and an SX of margin right 5 pixel. Actually, margin bottom, five pixel. And then finally, we're gonna to go to the subtitle. We're gonna say this is a variant of H5 
and we're going to set color equals colors dot green accent 400. And right now there's nothing to display. So we're going to go back and we're going to go to our dashboard component. And inside our dashboard component, we are going to add the header as well. So dashboard, we're going to set header like so. And we're going to set a title of dashboard in all caps and subtitle of welcome to your dashboard. And above this, I'm going to change this to something else. And this is going to be a box component from Material UI. This is going to have a margin of 20 pixel. And inside this, we're going to have one more box. And we're going to say that the header will go into this box. And we're going to say this is a display of flex the justify content of space between and we're going to do align items and set that as center now if you take a look and we have Heather is not defined oh that's because we did not import this we want to import our Heather and our IntelliSense will help us with that so if you go back now you can see the header and subtitle over here. Now, before we go on and building the dashboard, I want to create the pages first because some of the charts are going to be used in the dashboard. So it makes sense to build those charts first and the other pages. So if I take a look at the other pages, we're going to start with the team. So these are data grid tables. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the material UI react data grid page. And this includes how you can use the data grid. Now there's a lot of documentation for this for a good reason. It has so many different options, a lot of customizability, and this is enterprise level. So if you ever have questions, people probably have answered it because there's a lot of users of material UI and especially their data grid. The data grid, the, there is a paid version of data grid but most of the time, majority, I guarantee you, most of the time, you will not need the paid version. You can use the free version and you'll still be most likely okay unless you need really extensive tables. So if you take a look, we have the data grid component. We can do lots of different things. So we're going to take it as one step at a time. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create another scene. Let's close all of this. Let's close these. We're going to create a team component. So that represents the team page. So we're going to create a scene folder and we're going to call this team and we're going to pass in index.jsx like so. All right, and from here, oh, I got to make sure I save this. And then from here, we're going to create, or we're actually importing a lot of different things. So we're going to import box like usual. We're going to import typography and then use theme. And we're also going to import data grid from material UI data grid. We're going to import, oh, import tokens from the theme file. And we're going to import mock data team from the data file. So as I mentioned before, when you write the theme, you guys wanted to copy this and paste it over. So the first one that we're going to use is mock data of this theme. So we need some mock data to use the tables. In real life or a real production app, you're going to have all this data provided to you through API calls or through some other means. But in this case, we're just going to make up the data to make our lives easier. So that's why we are importing this. And then from here, we're going to import some icons. So instead of that, we're going to pass this in like so. We're going to say icon and slash 
admin panel settings outline like that. We're going to copy this, paste it two more times, and we're going to say this is going to be a lock, open, outline icons, and this one is going to be security. And lastly, we're also going to import header just like we have created. Here we're going to create the component, team component. And we're going to say export default team. And we're going to say we're going to pass in const theme equals use theme like we did before with colors equals token theme dot palette dot mode. And we're going to return. And we're going to go down and we're going to put a box with the header and we're going to pass in title equals team and the subtitle of managing the team members and we're going to surround this with the box and we're going to this is where we're going to actually pass in data grid now data grid has a lot of key value properties that you can pass in. But in this case, we only need a few things. So we're going to say we want rows is going to be equal to mock data team. So usually the data goes into the rows section. And there's also a columns property. And this is going to pass in a variable that we will create. So columns will represent what we're going to pass in that will identify the keys and properties that we'll be showing as the column name and which key to use. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So first off, we're going to say columns is equal to actually not an object, it's going to be an array. So we're going to pass in one object that's going to have a field of ID and the header name is going to be capital ID. So what this is really referring to is going to be if you look in the mock data, let's move this over, you're going to have the field ID. So it takes whatever is in the row, grabs that ID as the one the information to essentially grab and the header name is going to represent the column title name of the table. So the header name represents this, for example, the ID and the field represents the value that it's grabbing from. So in this case, the values are ID. So that's what this is actually doing. So let's go back. We can add the next one as well. So in this case, we're going to say field is going to be name with the header name of capital name. And let's actually bring this up. Let's bring this up so we can see better. So if you take a look, we have a field name of header name right here. And we have the columns there. So now there are a couple more settings that we want to use. We're going to say flex equals one. So Material UI provides you the ability to customize the column itself. So in this case, it's going to grow to one fraction of the size for in terms of flex. So this was this one's going to grow. This one won't grow depending on how many items there are because this is ID. We want that to be small. And then from here, we're going to actually add a custom cell class name. So this will allow us to customize our column cell later on when we add the classes. So that's the name. Now we want to add age. So we're going to copy and paste. We're going to say age 
instead. And instead of this being flex, because this is going to be a small column as well, we're going to say this is going to be a number column. We're going to set a header, a line, and we're going to set this to the left. For some reason, when you have the number, it's going to align it to the right, but we want it to be the left, and we're going to have an align of left. And this one, we do not need a custom class name. It's because the name, we want to change the color of the name. And then next, we're going to have a field of phone. We're going to move all this. We're going to say phone because that represents here. And we're going to give this a phone number. And we're going to give this a flex of one. I can spell that correctly. We're going to do the same with email. We're going to pass in email over here. And finally, we're going to add one more field. This one is going to be kind of special, but we're going to, I'll show you why. The field is going to be access, and we're going to call the header name of access level. We are going to keep the header name as access level. The flex is going to be there, and we're going to have a separate property called render cell. Now, this is a really cool input meaning this we can customize the cell as we want so in this case i have customized this to my own liking and that's because i created my own component in there so i go into render cell and what we can do is we can destructure and grab the row so that represents a row name and then we're going to grab the access property from there so it grabs the data from the access here so we're going to use that information to render what we want. And we're going to return a box with our own custom styling. So in this, we're going to have a width of 60% margin of zero auto. And by the way, this is another shorthand. So margin zero, if you only put two, this represents top and bottom, and this represents left and right. And I'll tell you, these shorthands might be annoying at first because you have to remember them, but they are very convenient once you get the hang of it. And then we're going to add the padding of five pixel. And we're going to do display, flex, justify, content, and we're going to set that as center and we're going to set the background color dependent the background color is going to be changing depending on their axis so if the axis is admin we are going to set colors to green accent of 600 Otherwise, we are going to say green accent of 700, if not. And let me make sure I write that correctly. And then we're also going to have a border radius of 4 pixel. And inside this box, because it's a container, we want to show different icons depending on the access level. So access is going to be, if it's an admin, we are going to have the admin panel settings outline icon that we have added. And we're going to do, and let me remove this so we have more space. So depending on the different access, we're going to have different icons. So if it's a manager access, we're going to do security. And then if it's a user, we're going to put a lock outlined. Lock open outlined icon. And then finally, we're going to add some text. And we're going to put that as the access text that we have. We're going to set the color to colors 
dot gray 100 and we're going to set sx equal to margin left 5 pixel now if we take a look this is the completed app if i go here go manage team we actually don't see anything and that's because we need to set the box property so right now we have most of it set up but we need to still define the box and the height so right now we have a height of 100 percent and that's the problem with css we need to explicitly define at some point in the parent component an actual pixel height definition. So we'll be doing that in this particular box down here. So before you do that, we're going to add a margin of 20 pixel. And in this box, we are going to have a margin of 40 pixel, 000, zero, zero at the top, a height and we are going to use viewport height and we're going to set that as 75 viewport height which is a safe good bet and that and because we're not using percentages viewport height sets this explicit defined value that allows data grid to show and as you can see we have we have a beautiful table now the styling is a little different now i want to change the styling so how do we do that so Again, similar to React Pro sidebar, we're going to go and we're going to define via SX over here. And we can define and grab particular properties as we need. So the way you find these properties is pretty easy, is that you go in, let's clear this. You go in, you can grab and look and see what these class names are. And if you can identify which one you are targeting, then you can change those classes. So if you go down here, let's say this one, column, header, draggable, container. But more importantly, for example, you would target this class, MUI data grid dash column header. That's one CSS class that we can change. But I'll show you. I'll show you how we can choose it. So if we go and dot MUI data grid root we can for example set this border as none and if you take a look now the borders are gone which is what I want from here we're going to target and dot MUI data grid dash cell and we're going to set border bottom to none and we're going to go down we're going to write and dot name column dash dash cell. I'm going to say color colors dot green accent 300. So this one in particular is actually the class name we defined over here. That's why we can actually target that one in specifically. And then next we can go and dot MUI data grid column headers. And we're going to set this as background color colors dot blue accent 700. And we're going to set a border bottom of none. Next we're going to go and dot MUI data grid virtual scroller. And we're going to set that as border top of none. Actually, sorry, this is not correct. We're going to set this as background color colors dot primary 400. And on the following, we're going to say and dot MUI data grid footer container border top of none background color of colors a blue accent 700 background color should have a capital C and if you take a look now we have everything styled 
as you can see name these are highlighted into different colors access level has different icons over here this this header is different color and the bottom the footer container has a different color as well so that's represented by this virtual scroller is the middle section so i changed the background for this the column headers like i mentioned border cell so every other cell doesn't have a border on the bottom and so on and so forth so this is how you can use the data grid table to customize both the styling and the data that you're putting in. There's just so many options and I really, really like this component when they came out with it. And from here, we're gonna create the contacts page. So we're gonna create a contacts folder and we're gonna pass in a file called index.jsx. And in this one, we're gonna copy everything in the team file and we're gonna copy and paste into the contacts. And we're going to just make some adjustments here. So we don't need any of these typography or use theme. We are actually going to pass in something called a grid toolbar for this one. And I'll show you how we can add extra filters that makes the tables a little better. And we're going to change mock data team to mock data contacts. We don't need these icons for these ones so and we are going to pass in use theme for this one like so not from emotion but rather from mui material and from here we're going to go to mock data contacts so basically i pressed command click or control click and that takes us to this page so I'm going to close everything and I'm going to move this to the left side so we can see we have the mock data contacts and we can change the fields as needed. So the first thing we're going to do is have ID, capital ID, and we're going to set this to flex 0.5 in this case. Then we're going to go down, we're going to add register ID. So we're going to add field register strar id and we're going to pass in header name and this will be register id capital and i'm going to pass a comma there and then we're going to keep name the same we're going to have age which is also the same phone number is going to be same email and then we're going to add address so actually, I'm going to copy this, repaste it, and we're going to have address like so, pass in capital address. We're going to do the same thing except with city, city, capitalize the C, and then the zip code. So we're going to change this zip code, lowercase to Z. And for this one, we don't need the access. So it starts from here. We're gonna close that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the title. So contacts, capital, and also the list of contacts for future reference. We're going to keep everything basically the same, except we're going to go down. We're going to under the footer container. We are going to add one more styling. So we're going to do and MUI data grid toolbar container dot MUI button dash text. And we're going to add a color of colors.gray 100 and we're going to set that as important. So this is going to be a toolbar that we're going to add that has a filter. So I just added it. So if you take a look on this page, 
we have columns, filters, density, and export. So Material UI allows you to use these columns, filters, and density, and you can place them in if you would like. So the way to do that is part of what we, the reason why we imported grid toolbar over here this is the purpose. So we're going to put components like so, and we're going to pass in toolbar and grid toolbar will go in that. And now if you take a look at our current build, we're going to go to contacts. Oh, actually, so we need to go to app.js and we need to uncomment the contacts out as well as uncomment it from the imports and now we got to look at we have some issue mock data team is not defined and that's because this should be mock data contacts and there you go now we have our table so this table means we can change the columns so if a user wants to see the table with less columns this is how you can do it you can show all hide all, things like that. Now, if you go to filters, you can do the same, except we're filtering depending on the property. So this is very useful. If the age is equal to 42, we can see which, which rows have that age. And so we can remove that. We can do all sorts of things with those. And then the density, we can change just the look of it, comfortable and we can export things if needed. So this is very, very nice. Very, very nice. And Material UI provides you access to it. Now, if you wanted to, you can customize this grid toolbar using some of the components that they already have, and then you can make it your own as well. So this is a very fantastic filter component. And FYI, I haven't showed you guys this yet, but you can, for each of these, by default, you can go and you can sort as well. You can also filter just like you did before based on this. You can hide, show columns, and do all of the good stuff with these three dots. So you can sort based on that. Just note with the sort, you can do three times. The third time, it'll be unsorted. So FYI. So right now it is ascending or actually yeah, ascending, descending, and then after that, this is just unsorted. That's why you see that. So it caught me off guard the first time. And the last table we're going to add is going to be invoices. So it's going to be pretty similar to what we have built before. So we're going to have an invoice. We're going to add a file, and it's going to call invoices.jsx. And in this invoice, we're just going to copy and paste again. Actually, this should be index to be consistent and we're going to paste everything over here and there's something i missed is that these components we have a team we want to change this to contacts to make better sense it doesn't do anything but it makes better sense same with this we're going to change this to invoices and then from here what we're going to do is we're going to go back up. We're going to add typography like so and use theme. We're going to remove that. We're going to change this to mock data, mock data invoices. And in this one, we're not going to have the toolbar. So we're just going to remove that. And we're going to go. And we're going to look at mock data invoices to see our new data set and align the columns again. So the ID, we don't need a flex for this one. We can change, we, can, we don't need the registrar ID. We have the name, we have phone, we do not have age. So we're going to remove that. We have email, and then we're going to have something called cost. So I'm going to copy and paste this. And this field is cost, capitalize this C. 
changes to flex one and then render cell will be params. Oops. And we're gonna give this a custom typography and pass in params.row.cost. So this grabs the value in the row in the data. We're grabbing the row and we're gonna grab the cost as well. And we put the dollar sign in front and we're gonna set this as color equals colors dot green accent 500. And the last thing we want to add is going to be date like so. Change this to capital D. We're gonna remove these because we don't need it. And that about sums that one up. And then we just gotta change the title. So this will be invoices and then list of invoice balances. And we're gonna take a look. And we don't have a toolbar for this one, but we are going to add a checkbox for this. MUI checkbox root. And we're gonna pass in color and we're gonna add colors dot green accent 200 and we're going to pass in important like so and for this one we don't need the components now we can add checkbox selection so if we do this we have one more thing to do which is uncomment the invoices on the app js page we're going to take out and comment out comment in the invoices and we can probably see yeah and there you go we have a third table now we have a checkbox as well now we don't have any kind of action for these but what you can do is you can customize the footer you can have it so that you can use the selected items to do some kind of action so if you wanted to approve let's say this is a request or email that you want to approve for whatever reason, then you can select it. Then Material UI provides you the selected items and you can send whatever API call or whatever action you need to do on those three items. And that's pretty much all of our data tables. These are incredible. The data grid is one of the most incredible tables I've used. It's very flexible has a lot of option, a lot of community support. I highly recommend it. And you can do a lot of great things without even paying for it. So I highly recommend using this table. All right, the next thing that we're building is going to be this profile form on this page. So this one is going to have some validation. You don't have it. This is an invalid email. You have an invalid number if you just put letters like that, things like that. and. If you haven't completed it, you have some errors, then this is going to trigger all the validation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be using Formic, which is a form library that's very great for building forms pretty easily. Now I know a lot of people use React Hook Form, which is the newest, latest library, and I do like React Hook Form, but when it comes to component libraries and using with Formic versus React hook form, I find Formic a better option, and I'll show you why. So when we go and use Formic, for example, we have a text field. So a text field is the equivalent of an input in Material UI with some styles. So with Formic, you can just pass in the value directly or on change and then the errors as well as the helper text directly into the text field component material from Material UI. So this, this is very nice. But when you're using Material UI with React hook form, you get this thing where you have to place a controller to use it. So when I put the controller, we are going to have to put the text field in this render property. So anytime you want to use a custom component, you're going to pass have to pass it into the render function, which which is fine right here, but when you have like a big component, 
and a very complex component. This render and all of this code makes it very difficult to read, and it makes it very long and verbose for the code. So it makes it a little bit difficult to logically deduce because you have to abstract the components out more so than just having this long, not long, but a decent sized text field component where you see all the values directly. So you don't have to abstract it further. However, when you're using React hook form with something like Tailwind JS, because you use the base HTML elements, I find React hook form very nice for that situation because you can directly change and control the input tags directly onto the base elements like so. So it makes it very nice when you use it for situations like this. With having said that, let's go back to our code. We're gonna create a new folder. We're gonna call this form, and we're gonna pass in a file called index.jsx, and we're gonna write some imports. So right here, we're gonna have import. We're gonna import box, material UI, and we're gonna import button and text field. And then we're going to import import formic. We're going to import everything as yup from yup. We're going to import use media query. So this is so we can have a responsive layout if needed. And we're going to pass in at MUI slash material slash use media query. And then we're also going to import the header that we have created. And then we're going to create a component const form. We're going to export default form. And we are going to return a box that give this a margin of 20 pixel. As for what we're putting in, we're going to add is non mobile and we're going to pass in use media query and we're going to set this as min width of 600 pixel. So what this is doing is that if we hit a min width of 600 pixel, we are triggering this basic Boolean. So use media query comes from material UI and allows us to use media queries inside our JavaScript or React element itself so we don't have to write it in CSS. And then from here, we're gonna have a function called handle form submit. So this function is going to be the function that triggers once we have submitted our form. And in this case, we're not really going to do anything with the form. We're not going to have anything that triggers anything. So we're just going to have console log values like so. We're just going to console log the values as it comes out. And inside our box, we're now going to add the header. And we're going to say title is going to be create user. And we're going to say subtitle is equal to create a new user profile. And then from here, we're going to pass in formic. And we're going to add a few things. So we're going to add on submit. And we're going to pass in the function that we just created, handle form submit. And then we're going to add initial values. And we're going to create an object of initial values. So the initial values are going to consist of an object of the values that we want this form to start with. But everything is going to be empty string because we don't want it to have anything. So we're going to pass in first name. I'm just going to copy this down and we're going to change it for each one. So this is going to be last name. We're going to change this to email, contact, address one, 
and address two. The reason why we don't have a number for contact is it's easier to make it a string and then we can change it as we need. And then finally, one more thing that we need to add to the formic component is going to be the validation schema. And we're going to create a schema called, let's say, user schema. And we're going to create the user schema as well. So we're going to go up here. We're going to write const user schema. And we're going to pass in yup.object.shape. And we're going to pass in our values. So this schema right here is going to define the validations, validation logic for each field that we're using. And Yup provides a lot of easily accessible pre-made validation functions. So the first thing is we're going to add first name, and we're going to do yup.string.required, and we're going to say this is required. So what this is going to do is that first name, if there is no input, we're going to say this first name is going to be a required input. And by doing this, this will be the text that pops up if an error is triggered. We're going to say the same thing for last name. So we're actually going to copy and paste this for every single one for now. So email, contact, address one, address two. So now we have our user schema. We're going to add a few more validation logic for email and contact. So the first thing we're going to add a phone reg X. So reg X is a JavaScript thing where you can check based on the string. So you'll be able to check what the values are. So now basically I'm just going to be copying this from Stack Overflow. So this is one of those things you could just go and copy from Stack Overflow because a lot of people have set up these regex that's very complicated and set up for specific things like phone is very common. So we're going to set the phone regex to be like that. So we're going to go into our contact yup string and we're going to say in before the required part, we're going to say matches and we're going to say it needs a phone reg XP and we're going to say phone number is not valid. And we're going to set it like that. So basically we're going to have two type of validation for contact now, which is going to be if it's not valid, if it doesn't match this correctly, it's going to give you this error. Otherwise, we are going to have required as the second error. And also, we're going to do email as well. And email is very convenient for, for yep because they already have something called dot email. And we're just going to pass an invalid email like so. So that makes it very easy and convenient to validate emails. And we're not going to deal with address and address too, but if you need specific logic, you can do that for those. And from here, Formic provides a number of pre-made values that come from the Formic component itself. So what we do, it's a little bit of funky syntax, but it makes sense. So we have values, errors, touched, handle blur, handle change, and handle submit. And it all comes from this function that we're going to pass in. So we go here and we're going to have an arrow function like so. And in here we pass in form unsubmit equals handle submit. So all of these values, errors, touched, handle blur, handle change, handle submit, all of them come from this form component. And this arrow function allows us to use these values inside our form component. All right, and then from here, we're gonna create a box component. 
And inside this, we're going to create a display of grid. So we're going to be using CSS grid, which is very, very nice once you get the hang of it. We're going to set a gap of 30 pixel, meaning that gives us a space between each item without having to set margin right or margin left on each item. And then we're going to set grid template columns. And what we're going to do is we're going to set a repeat of four min max of zero and one FR. So that's kind of a handful. So basically grid template columns allows us to split the grid into four sections and each of the section is going to have a minimum of zero. So that means they can squash to zero, but also a maximum of one FR, which is a very specific unit dedicated solely for grids. And these are fractional units. So basically that means each of the columns can have one fraction of the space, unless something, something pushes it to not be one fraction, then it's going to be smaller than that. So these are complicated to explain, but a lot of times, once you see it, it makes a lot of sense. And also, so what we're going to do is we're going to pass an SX because we want to target a specific div. So we're going to say and div, and we're going to pass in grid column. Actually, I messed up. So the colon should be after the quotations. And then we're going to do grid column. And we're going to say if it's non-mobile, we're going to not do anything. We're going to say it's undefined. We're not going to mess with the grid column. If it is, if it is non-mobile, meaning if it is desktop, we're going to, or if it's, sorry, if it is mobile, then we're going to say this is going to be a span of four. So that means when it means span of four, that means it takes up the entire line. So if I look over here, that means this, because we have, we're splitting this into four sections, four represents the entire line. If I said span of two, which is gonna be equivalent to this, this is gonna be half of it. So span two, span two. So now if I go into the box, we're gonna start by creating our text field. Now I'll show you how the grid works after. It'll make a lot more sense once I create it. So we create our text field and we're going to pass in a bunch of properties. So text field, we're going to set this as full width. We're going to give it a variant of filled, a type of text, a label of first name. Actually, sorry, this should be non camel case. So first name like that on blur should be handle blur on change should be handle change value is going to be values dot first name name should be first name camel case error should be touched so now what I'm doing is I'm doing a double negative here. Basically what this is kind of doing is forcing it to become a Boolean. So we're going to say touched first name. So touched, if you don't know what touched means, that means if you have touched that component or if drawn focus. So basically if you look here and I click out, that means you touched it. And that's why it gives you a required, um, required property. So because these are not touched, the error validation is not triggering because we are triggering the helper text, so the required, based on whether you've both touched it and it doesn't meet the error. So in this case, we haven't touched it and the error, but the error is triggered. We don't get a helper text. But if we do touch it, so now the error is triggered as true and the touched is triggered as true. So both of those are true, then we show the helper text. But if one of those becomes not true, then we don't show the helper text. And that's what's gonna happen with this error. So if I go here, 
and say and errors dot first name that's what this logic is doing so we have to make sure that the first name for both touched and errors is true for the error to show up that's what this error property is about and then we're going to say helper text which is going to be the same thing we're going to say touched dot first name so it has to be touched and then we can show the errors of first name if there is ex if there is an error and then we're going to give this an sx of grid column and we're going to say a span of two so that represents the two width that we have mentioned prior and that's why it only takes up two by the way this is a completed app i'm not showing you what we have right now so if you go here we can see we have all these different properties and values over here. So now there's a, quite a bit, but they're pretty self-explanatory. The so variant is the type of text field that we have. Type text is just a type, so it can be a number as well if you wanted. The label is what's displayed as the text title. On blur represents the function that changes depending on when you touch it or not and when you touch out of it. So that is the function that gets run when you touch out of it. Handle change represents when you change the text. Value represents the values of the field. So values dot first name. So it has to align with the value that you want it to change. So in this case, values dot first name, that's what's being changed. And then we have first name as the name. So again, this needs to align with this particular value. So that's why you have the name and the error. These have to align to the correct touched and errors. So after all this, this is pretty self-explanatory. And what we can do is we're going to be just copying this over and over. And then from here, we could just take this text field. We could just copy paste multiple times. And we're just going to modify each one of these. And it's going to be very simple to do. So first name, this should be last name name. The values should be last name as well. This one should be last name. Actually, to make it faster, I should be selecting most of these and I can say last name like so. This should be column span of two. So that fills the first line. And then the next one is going to be email. So we're going to take first name, change that to email. We're going to change all of these first names right here. We're going to say email for this one. We're going to say span of four. So it fills up the entire line. Next, we're going to do contact number. And we're going to say, or we're going to get all the first names here. And we're going to change this to contact. So the label and the value is a little different in this case. And again, this should be a span of four. The next one is going to be address one. This is going to be address one as well. And this should be span of four. And the same thing with the next one, which is going to be address two and change all these first names to address two. We're going to change this to a span of four. And then from here, we don't need any more fields. So we're just going to get rid of those. And then finally, we need to go to app again. We need to comment, uncomment the form field and we're gonna pass in and uncomment the import as well. So now if we take a look at our current component or current application, we're gonna to go to profile form. And as you can see, we have everything with validation. So if I just write a bunch of letters, we go here, we get an invalid email. So if I write a bunch of text, it says phone number is not valid. And if I don't have anything, it's gonna show required. So this is the power of Formic and Yup makes it very simple for these type of forms. 
And then finally, we need to add a button. So what we're going to do is we're going to create another box outside of the other box. And we're going to say we're going to add a button component. And we're going to say create new user. So this one should be a display of flex justify content of end and the margin top of 20 pixel. This will allow us to align the button to the far right. And we're going to say button type is going to be submit. We're going to set the color as secondary. And we're going to say variant is equal to contained. And now with that, we can check our form. So we can see if we touch out of it, we get a required. If we have some kind of text, it's OK. Now if we go to it, email, we can just write some kind of random email. But if it's not correct like that, it will say invalid email. But if I say .com, that will be fine. If I have a number, that's OK. But if I add, say, like a letter, it's going to say phone number is not valid. And then we're going to say for the address, this is OK. So now if I hit create new user, this will console log all the values as we have set in our handle form submit, like here. Now that we finished the form, we're going to go on to the next section, which is going to be the calendar app. So if we go to our completed app, we'll see that we have a calendar that has lots of different options with meet, month, week, day, and list view. And we can be able to add events like so and pass this in. So what we're going to be using is something called full calendar, which is a package that provides you a lot of this functionality out of the box with some configuration. So if you take a look, this is the docs. You can see it in the description if you need to, if you want to check the documentation out. So we're going to go into our code. We're going to create a new folder. We're going to call this calendar. We're going to create a new file, index.jsx. And we're going to be starting. Let's remove all these. And we're going to start by importing a number of things. So we're going to import use state from React. We're going to import full calendar. And we're going to pass in format date as well. And this is all going to come from at full calendar slash react. We're going to import day grid plugin. Actually, let's go to the website and we could just copy all of this right here to make our lives easier. So we're just going to copy it. There's also going to be one more thing I want to import and it's going to call interaction plugin. And it's going to be from the at full calendar slash interaction like so. And then we're also going to import box component list, list item, list item text, typography, use theme. And we're going to get it from at MUI slash material. And we're going to import header like usual. And we're going to import tokens from theme. And then we're going to create the calendar component. Like so, we're going to say export default calendar. And we're going to start by adding some state and hooks. So const theme equals use theme like we did before. So we can use colors. So we're going to say const colors equals tokens theme dot palette dot mode like we normally do. And we're going to add one piece of state and we're going to call this current events. So and we're going to have set current events. So what this is going to save is the array of events that we can put onto our calendar. And then we're going to add a function called handle date click. So this function will handle the situations when you click on some kind of date. And that will trigger the prompt 
of what type of event you want to create. So we're going to click selected and we're going to say const title equals prompt. So prompt is a native JavaScript function that will just trigger a standard browser alert pop up. And this is a shorthand for that. And we can say, please enter a new title for your event. Now, typically for this, you would create a modal instead and create some kind of check that will open the modal right here instead. But for now, we're going to keep this simple and we're going to just use prompt. So we don't have a decade long course. So we're going to have a calendar API and we're going to say selected dot view dot calendar. And we're going to say calendar API dot unselect. So making sure that once we click on the date, we can unselect it immediately because we want to enter a new title for the event instead. So we don't want to keep having it clicked. So if the title exists, so meaning if some user writes the title, we can say calendar dot API or sorry, calendar API dot add event. And this will add the event into the calendar app. So we're going to have ID and we're going to say selected dot date string. And we're going to say, give it a title for the ID. We're going to give it the title that the user put. We're going to say start is going to be the selected start string. The end is going to be selected end string. And then all day is going to represent selected dot all day. So again, when you click on it, full calendar provides you with the selected and the selected comes with a lot of properties that you can use and you can console log to see what it provides if you want. And then from there, we're going to add another function called const handle event click. So this function will be triggered when you click on an event. And in this case, we're going to make it very simple. And we're going to say window.confirm. Are you sure you want to delete the event? And we are going to add single quotes, we pass in selected dot event dot title, another quote like that. And we're going to say selected, oops, selected dot event dot remove. So basically just to keep this calendar application very simple, we are adding a function. Whenever you click an event, it's going to check and give you a question. Are you sure you want to delete the event, which will provide a yes or no. And if you do want to delete, it's going to remove. Now, again, you would create your own modal for this kind of things if you're using it for production level app, but we're trying to make it very simple. So we're going to just use the native prompts and confirmation modals. And then from here, we're going to return a box component like so. We're going to give it a margin of 20 pixel like usual and give it a header. We're going to give it a title of calendar. Actually, this should be capitalized. And then we have a subtitle of full calendar interactive page. Let me fix the text like so. And now we're going to create another box or a div. Let's actually save it so we have an auto formatted. So we're going to have display of flex and we're going to say justify content of space between. So if you take a look at the app, 
right here, we are splitting this into two sections, this right here with the events and this right here with the actual calendar app. So that's why we are using Flex. So we're gonna go back to our code. We're gonna look and see in our box and we're gonna write calendar sidebar. So that represents the left side. And we're gonna have a box as well. And we're gonna say flex of one, oops, one, one, twenty percent. So now this is a shorthand. So this represents grow, shrink, and the width or the percentage of space it wants to take. So when you're using Flexbox, you generally want to use flex as opposed to a width percentage. Then we have background color, and we're going to set this to colors.primary400. And then we're going to set a padding of 15 pixel, and we're going to set a border radius of 4 pixel. I'm going to save that, and we're going to add typography. We're going to say variant of H5 and give it events as the title. And then we're going to go and create a list component. And we're going to map through and cycle through the current events that we have. We don't have any current events right now, but we will be creating them once we have our calendar component. So inside this list, we're going to say current events dot map and we're going to grab the event from each item and we're going to create list item and inside each list item we're going to give it properties of key event dot id sx equals background color dot colors colors dot green accent 500 and then from here we're going to add another property margin of 10 pixel on the top and bottom zero on the left and right because I'm using a shorthand border radius of 2 pixel and inside the list item we can pass in list item text and the list item text will take some properties such as primary which is going to be the event dot title and the secondary is going to include a typography that's going to have format date which is a function provided by full calendar it allows you to use the dates that they give you and it allows you to format them and you get event.start we're passing event.start into format date so we get the date and what we need to do is pass in an object that has the options and so this will be year and the year is going to be in numeric form month is going to be in short form and day is going to be numeric and the we need to fix the syntax over here so this should be after that list item text actually the list item text can be a self-closing tag so we could get rid of that and I think that should be good to take a look at our current app. Oh, and then let's make sure we uncomment the calendar app. So I'm going to move this up right here. Let's move this up and have the calendar app. And let's check it out. OK, so we can't resolve full calendar in React. So let's look back. As you can see, I have a few errors that I cannot resolve full calendar slash React and full calendar interaction. So I forgot to install these packages as I realized. So I'm going to open up my terminal, create a new terminal over here, 
Well, let's open. We're going to do npm i at full calendar slash react and at full calendar slash interaction. So this should install the final two packages that we have missed prior. Okay, once that's installed, I'm gonna close this terminal and, <laughs> okay, so the text is a little messed up here. Um, I'm gonna close this terminal, go back, and as you can see, now the page is working for calendar. We don't have anything and it's taking up the full length. That's because we have flex grow as one, so it's taking up the entire space. We just haven't created the other section. So we're gonna have to create our full events to see what it's going to be supposed to look like. So we're gonna go back and we're gonna go down and we're gonna go down to the box section right here and we're gonna add calendar. And here we're gonna say box is gonna give a flex of one, one, 100%. Give it a margin left of 15 pixel. And now we can actually pass in our full calendar component. Now there's gonna be a lot of properties in here, but that also allows for a lot of flexibility. We're gonna set this height as 75 viewport height to make sure it takes up enough space. And then we need to add the plugins as we have imported them. So we're gonna give it an array. We're gonna pass in day grid plugin, time grid plugin, interaction plugin, list plugin. And then we're gonna go header toolbar. So this sets up what the toolbar will look like at the top. So this is gonna take an object and we're gonna say left is gonna go prev next and we're gonna to set today. And for the center section, we're gonna have title. For the right section, we're gonna have day, grid, month, time, grid, week, time, grid, day, and list month. Then we're gonna go initial view. And we're gonna say day, grid, month, sure the R is not capitalized. So this will be what the default setting of the month will be. We're going to say it is editable, editable. True. We're going to say selectable, which is also true. Select mirror, which is true. Day max events equals true. So there's going to be a maximum of events per day. We're going to say select is going to be the function that we have created. So it's, this is going to be handle date click. So this is basically running the event handler when the date gets clicked. And then we're going to say event click and we're going to say handle event click. So this will be the one that handles the events as well. And we can say events set and we're going to do events set current events as the events. So basically this one is going to be what is saving the events that we've created into this particular state right here we have created. And to provide, and full calendar provides this handler so we can utilize this so we can get the events that the full calendar API is handling. And so we're also going to pass in some initial events. So it looks, doesn't look barren when we first go. So we're just going to say ID one, three, four. Actually, let's pass in a string one, two, three, four. We'll give it a title of all day event and give it a date of 2022-019 or 09-14 and we're going to add one more event. We're going to say this is 4321. Title is going to be 
timed event. We're going to say 2022, 9, 28. And with this, we should have everything set up. We don't seem to, oh, okay. So I made a mistake. Initial events is unidentified because I messed, misspelled it. And so if we go here, now we have the events and we have everything set up. We have the month, week, day, list. And it seems like there is an issue. Oh, I know why. So when you have the right, you need to make sure because the space actually affects how it looks like. So you want this to be no space. So prev, same with the prev and next. They need to not have any kind of space. So as you can see, these are fully aligned. We have weeks, days, list. So anytime we add an event, we get a prompt saying test. We get that events to be added. We can go into the week view or actually the list view and we can see the test. So now if we move this test to our current week, we can see the test item over here. We can even add events at a particular time. We can even highlight those times like that. Move it around and see what we have for the day as well. So we can move it, go over here, open it up. So now we have that event in the day and the same with the list. So you can see all of these events. And so, yeah, so you can customize everything in this plugin. And I find full calendar especially useful because it provides a lot of the things that would take a very long time to build. Like something like this would take a long time to build if you want to build it from scratch. But this provides a lot of customizability, a lot of functionality. Like DataGrid, there is a paid tier, and I think you can avoid it for the most part, but some cases you might need the paid tier, but I think the free tier should be good enough for most use cases. All right, and then from the calendar on our completed app, we're gonna look at FAQ page. Now FAQ page will be pretty simple. This is a standard accordion. So if you take a look, we can create this, but sometimes we need a FAQ page. So we're gonna go back. We're gonna go into our scenes folder. We're going to create a new folder. We're going to call it FAQ, create index.jsx in here. And we're going to go into this file and we're going to start creating and importing the things we need. So we're going to import box from material UI as well as use theme. We're going to import header. We're going to import accordion from material UI. And this actually should be accordion like this. And we're going to import accordion summary. And this should be accordion summary as well. And then we're going to import accordion details from at MUI material slash accordion details. We're going to import typography. And we're going to import one icon and it's going to be the expand more icon. Oh, that should be spelled. There we go. Let's see if no, it doesn't pop up. So we're going to import it from at MUI slash icons material slash expand more. And then we're going to import tokens from theme. And then from here, we're going to create a component called FAQ. And we're going to say export default FAQ. And we're going to import our theme or not import, but we're going to create the use theme and we're going to create the colors as well. And we're going to pass in tokens theme dot palette dot mode. And we're going to return 
a box with margin of 20 pixel. Then we have a header of title FAQ with subtitle of frequently asked questions page. And then from here, we can just create our accordion. Now let's actually save it so we have it formatted. So let's create our accordion. And so the idea is we're going to have accordion summary and then accordion details. So we're going to say accordion summary. And we're going to give it an expand icon of expand more icon. Again, I spelled it incorrectly. So we're going to do that. We're going to close that and we're going to pass in typography and give it a colors of colors dot green accent of 500. And we're going to do a variant of H5. And we're going to pass in an important question. And then we're going to say accordion details. So this will be the information inside the accordion or inside that particular question. So we're going to say typography. And we're going to give it some random text. Now you can put whatever text you want. I have some warm ipsum text like that. And so this will be the first box. So all we have to do with the accordion is we can just copy and paste it throughout. So that will be question one, question two, question three, question four, five, and six. Let's go and go to the first one. That should be important. And we're going to say another important question. And then you can say your favorite question, some random question, and the final question. Actually, we don't need the last one. So let's remove that. And we want all of these to be expanded once we load the page. So they're going to be all expanded. So we're going to say default expanded. So let's just go over here, default expanded, default expanded, default expanded, same here. And we can now save it. And that's pretty much it for that one. So let's import this. So we're going to go to our FAQ, move that up, import FAQ as well. And we should be able to see it. So this is our current application, not the completed one. So we could FAQ page, and now we can see everything we have. So we have an accordion. Just FYI, where I'm getting this accordion is Material UI, and you can see that all the documentation is on this page. So you can have different type of accordions if you want to. Next step are Nevo charts. So if you go to the Nevo website, which is nevo.rocks, these are a nice set of charts that you can use that are built on top of D3 and you can use them in React. Now, what I really like about these type of charts is of course it looks good, but you can visualize what the parameters do in real time on this website by just changing some of these values. So if I go down and change the border radius, you can see that it makes some changes onto the charts itself. So if I go down, let's say I don't want labels. Now we don't have that. We can say label skip width. We can enable grid, enable grid Y. We can disable them do anything we want and visualize it. And once you change it, 
it'll show in the code as well. So all you have to do is once you have the chart that you want, you can literally just copy the code that it gives you and it provides a very nice option. Okay, so with this bar chart, so now I configured some of the things. I'm gonna keep the y-axis and the grid and we're gonna remove the label as we just did prior, but we're gonna go in and we're just gonna copy this piece of code. So we're just gonna go down and we're gonna copy this entire thing. So we're gonna go to our code and we're gonna create a new file. We're gonna call it bar chart JSX and we're gonna create it in the components folder. And the reason why we're not putting it in the scenes folder as of yet is that bar chart is going to be used in two locations, which is the main page, which is on the dashboard, and it's also gonna be used in the separate page itself. So it's being shared through multiple locations and that's why we're putting in the components folder. So now I'm going to create a component called const bar chart. And we're gonna do export default bar chart, like so. And I'm going to return what I just imported or what I just copied. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some imports as well because we're going to need it. We're going to use use theme from material UI. And then we're going to import responsive bar from Nevo bar and then import tokens as well. And finally, we are going to import the mock bar data as data from the data file that we copied earlier. So now this data gets passed into this data and where I got the original piece of data was from here on Nevo. So you can just go down, copy their example data if you wanted to, but I have the data copied in here to keep it both neat and I made some modifications to some of the data. So feel free if you want to change the data, but I'm going to be using the example data so we don't waste more time just by tweaking the data itself. And then from here, I'm going to pass in a few things. Const theme equals use theme, like so. We're going to pass in colors as well as we normally do. We're going to save that. And if you take a look, if we save this, some of the theme will not be correctly themed with our app. So if you take a look, this is all white color. This is the final app. These are white colored on the back background. But if you take a look at this charts, these are kind of darker colors, so it wouldn't stand out. So there is a way to change some of the theme and the coloring as well. So the way we do that is that we go down to the theme section and we go and it says, please have a look at the dedicated guide. And you open that up and you can see that this is how you're gonna be able to change some of the theme objects. So if you take a look at this theme object, you can modify whatever params that you need for each element in question to change the colors. So I'm not gonna copy and paste this entire thing, but I have played around and made some of the color changes as needed. So if I go here, I can add a property called theme and pass in an object. And here we're gonna put axis, and we're gonna say domain, and we're gonna say line, and we're gonna say stroke colors dot gray 100. And then on the following line, we're gonna say legend, and we're gonna say text fill colors dot gray 100. And then from here, we're gonna say ticks is going to be line stroke colors dot gray 100. And we're gonna say stroke width is going to be one. And we're gonna say text 
fill colors dot gray 100 and then finally on the same level as the axis we're going to say legends and we're going to pass in text fill colors dot gray 100 so basically if you notice what i'm doing i'm basically targeting a lot of different things basically line legend ticks and some other elements and we're going to say they're going to be colors gray of 100 so they're just a lighter color if it's on a back black background that's all i'm doing and from here i'm going to create a folder called bar in the scenes and we're going to create a new file called index.jsx. Now I'm going to pass in the bar chart over here. So we're going to start with importing a box from material UI. And we're going to import header from, actually let's, yeah, let's use IntelliSense to get that. And we're going to import bar chart as well. And we're going to call this component bar and we're going to do export default bar. And all we're going to do is we're going to have a return and we're going to say box and we're going to say, do margin box of, or sorry, margin of 20 pixel. We're going to pass in header with title of bar chart. We're going to say subtitle of simple bar chart and we're going to say box and give it a height of 75 viewport height and finally we can pass in bar chart and we're going to go to our app we're going to uncomment this out same with the bar up here and after that, let's give it a test. So let's go to our website and we're going to go to bar chart. And as you can see, we can see our beautiful bar chart in this location. Perfect. Now there's one more thing I want to do is we're going to go to our bar chart and I'm going to make this reusable and we're going to give this an is dashboard property. So in the case that we're using the dashboard, or if we're using the bar chart in the dashboard section, we want to make some modifications to some of the visuals because it's a smaller bar chart. We want to change a few things. So I'm going to manually do this. So we're going to go to the axis bottom and I want to change the legend. <clears throat> Just FYI, the reason why I'm doing this is because in the dashboard, there's less space. So we're not going to have as much space for example, like the legend. So we're going to add this here. We're going to do the same thing for food. And let me check if there's anything else. I think that's pretty much it. So that should be good for the dashboard. All right. I'm going to close everything real quick. Next chart that we're going to create will be the pie chart. So we're going to go back to the Naivo website. We're going to go here. We're going to look for the pie chart, which is on the far left. And we're going to open this up. For this, I'm not going to really do any changes. I like the way it kind of looks. So if I take a look, this is pretty much the same. Oh, the one thing I do not like is having the labels there. So let's look for that. Arc labels. Yeah. There you go. So you can remove those arc labels. You can also remove this text if you wanted to and change up some of those things, but this is perfectly fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go here and copy all the code. And we're going to go and create a new file and we're going to call this pychart.jsx. And I'm going to create const pi equals arrow function and we're going to return and paste in all the code we just wrote and do export default pi actually this should be pi chart and we're going to do some imports and we're going to import responsive 
Phi from Naivo. And then we're going to import tokens. Let's actually go back to bar chart. We're going to copy the tokens as well, as well as the theme. So we're going to copy this. And we're going to copy the use theme because they're going to be the same. And finally, we're going to import mock pi data. And we're going to call this as data. And again, the data exists on the chart. So we can copy this. But I have the data in this mock data. In this case, I didn't modify it. But sometimes you could just modify the data if you wanted to. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here, copy the theme and colors again. So we have some consistency. And next, let me save that. And the next thing I want to do is I'm going to add theme. And I'm going to pass in axis with domain a line of stroke colors gray 100. I'm going to copy this because I'm going to be using this again. So we're going to go to axis. Then we're going to add legend on the same level as domain. Pass in text, fill, paste in what I copied. Same with ticks. And we're going to do line, stroke, paste in, stroke width of one. Text is going to be fill of colors gray 100. And on the same line of axis, we're going to put legends. And we're going to say text, fill, paste it all that. And then we're going to go to scenes. We're going to create a new folder. And we're going to call this pi. Pass in an index.jsx. And we're going to basically do the same thing we did with the bar chart. So which we could go to the bar scene, copy and paste everything paste it here, call this pi instead of bar, and call this pi chart, removing all of these, and call this pi chart, simple pi chart as well. And then we're going to get header, box, everything should be pretty much the same. So let's save that that let's go to our app to uncomment this pie so we can see it so we go here we uncomment this out move this up we're going to go to our app and here we have our bar chart now if you take a look these color is kind of messed up so the color and the text i thought the theme would take care of it but if i go back to by the pie chart we can actually change the text color right here. And this is going to be called the arc link labels text color. So if I change this color, you can see that it disappears. So we're going to look for arc link labels text color as the property for the pie chart. So if I go down, search that, and now you can see we have this particular color. So the color I'm going to put will be Let's say arc level. Okay. Yeah. So if I put this, I'm going to put colors dot gray 100. Now, if you take a look at our chart, we can see that the text color pops up. And the last thing I don't like is about this is the, all these like fills. So you have some like diagonal lines here, filling and some dots. I like to be flat for this type of theme. So I'm going to go into pie chart and you see the fill section. This is where it determines what type, how it fills those locations. So if I delete all of that, now we get a section where there's nothing. Now you don't have anything above it. So that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. And perfect. This is our pie chart. So next step is going to be line chart. So if we go back to Nevo, go into the main page, we're going to find the line chart. And in this line chart, we have a lot of straight lines for this, but I want something that's more 
smoother. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to choose Catmull ROM for the curve. I also don't want the grids. So I'm going to remove the grid and the Y, as you can see. And we're going to basically copy this. So this is exactly what I want. So I'm going to copy and paste it into our code. So I'm going to go down, create a new component. We're going to call this line chart dot JSX. And then from here, I'm going to import a number of things, responsive line, remove that. And we're going to import mock line data from there. And I'm going to create the component. Don't worry, I'll add the theme imports as well. But I want to create this first so I can copy this that I copied like that. And then I'm going to go to pie chart, grab the two information right there with the tokens and use theme and copy the theme and colors as well. So we're going to go down line charts and copy that. And now also I forgot to export default line chart like so. And so we're going to save it. Um, I'm going to add the theme like so. And we're going to say axis is a domain of line stroke. And we're going to say colors dot gray 100. And like before, we're going to copy that. We're going to create legend. We're going to say text fill and pass in colors gray again. I'm meant to copy this. And then we're going to go ticks and we're going to say line stroke colors dot gray 100 stroke width of one. And we're going to say text is fill colors dot gray 100. And chances are we could probably, we could have just copied the same theme as the prior ones, but there's a few other things we want to change. So we're going to say legends text fill. And we're also going to do tooltip. We're going to say this container is going to be color. And this one is actually going to be colors dot primary instead five hundred like so. Okay. And then before we go on, I want to add the is dashboard because in this case, we are going to be using this component on the dashboard as well. So we need to make some modifications for that specific scenario. So I'm going to add that property and I'm going to go down to the color section. Actually, the colors doesn't exist here. We're actually going to add colors. So when it is a dashboard, I want to choose our own color scheme that we, or that I inputted. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Otherwise we use the default scheme that we are seeing over here. So basically in this case, I'm using the scheme Nevo, which if you go back to the chart, that's basically this theme. So on the separate chart page, we're going to have the default scheme. But if we wanted our own custom colors, I can go back and take a look at what I wrote in the mock data. So let's go to mock line data. So basically I added my own color scheme right here. Tokens, dark green accent, tokens, dark blue accent. So I'm manually putting in colors for some of the data points. And by doing so, I can pass in colors and the color scheme over here, this allows me to use my own particular color scheme. Otherwise we would default to the scheme that is provided to us by Naivo. And then from here, we're going to do in the legend, we're going to have is dashboard. We're going to say it's undefined again. So we don't want the legend when it's on the dashboard because of the limited space. Same with the axis left. 
And then from here, I want to change a few things. So, yeah, so on the dashboard, there are not not that much uh, space. So we want to reduce the number of tick values. So if you take a look, this is way too many ticks when you're on the main page. So we're going to reduce the number of ticks. And we do that by limiting the tick value. And actually, sorry, I made a mistake. It should be an axis left side, not the bottom. The bottom is OK. So we're going to keep it just like that. Oh, and I forgot when you do mock line data, I'm going to change this to as data so that we have the data aligned. And then after that, <clears throat> we're going to go and create a new folder. And we're going to call this line. And we're going to pass in index.jsx. And we're going to do the same thing like we've done before. And that is, we're going to import a few things. Actually, let's go to pi, copy all of this. And we're going to change everything again. And we're going to say line chart. Change the pies to line. Same with the last. So we're going to say line. And the final thing we want to do is go to app.js. We're going to uncomment the line like so. And we're going to save it. Let's take a look at what we have. So if I go here, this is our party chart. We go down to our line chart and we have a nice looking line chart. Perfect. This is exactly what we wanted. All right. And then finally, let's do the last chart, which is a geography chart. So if you go to Nevo, let's go back. We can take a look and what we're looking for is chloropath. So this is the geography map basically. So this one is going to be the most confusing one to deal with, but it's relatively simple once you know what to do. So instead of doing any kind of changes, we're just going to copy it straight up like so all right here, copy all of this. And we're going to go to our file, create a new component. We're going to call this geography chart JSX. Actually, let me close up all these tabs so it's not cluttering it up. And I'm going to say const geography chart and pass it in. I'm going to say export default geography chart. I'm going to say return and I'm just going to copy and paste what we just placed. And I'm going to import what we normally do with, let's go to pie chart, let's copy this, import tokens, and then we're also going to import the theme and colors, just like we did in the other charts. And then we're going to go and we're going to import responsive chloropet. And now, the one thing about the geography chart is that if you want to use this type of chart with the whole global world, you have to pass an array of features as mentioned. For example, the geomap chart. So this is the base component that is used for creating a geography chart just like this. However, you need to pass this example file if you go here. Please note that because the feature file is pretty huge, it's not included in the generated code. So you can find the file used for this example here. So basically, it takes you to this page. And if you look at, you click the raw, it'll take some time. It's going to give you this gigantic file. So basically, what you would have to do is you copy and you go to a file just like this one and you paste it. And But I already created this, so if you already copied it, this is perfect. So basically, I copied and pasted it into here as geo features. And what you're supposed to do over here in the features section, all you have to do is pass in the geo features that we just copied.
and pass in features, just like that. So I imported everything that was copied over and I set that as the features section. And that is how this would work. And the last thing is we need to actually pass the data as well. So don't get confused that this is not the data. This is part of setting up a geography data map set, whereas this is the actual data that we are giving it to. So we're going to go geography data as data from data slash mock data. And then from here, we should have majority of what we need, but there's a few things I want to change manually. And the reason why I'm changing manually because it doesn't, there's no option in the documentation to change some of these things. But first thing I want to do is add the theme. So I'm going to go to pie chart. I'm just going to copy the theme over here because most of it is going to be the same, but let's see line stroke. This should be the same ticks. This is going to be the same text is going to be the same legends. Okay. So this is perfect. This is actually everything we need. So they're exactly the same. And then from here, I'm going to make some adjustments. I'm going to delete these colors. So this is the color scheme that it provides you, but it looks very nice if you just delete it and it perfectly matched up with what I wanted. So I save that and I'm going to remove a lot of the definitions, which is all the highlighting and fills. We don't need any of this. So we just have like a flat, like colors. And then from here, I'm going to create the is dashboard version as well, because this one requires some adjustments as well. We don't want the legend to be showing because of how little space we have on the dashboard and also the projection scale. So when you look back on the chloropeth chart, you can take a look. And the problem is when you take a look at the projection scale, it determines how close in and how zoomed in you are using. And because the charts are different sizes for those different pages, they don't translate as well if you use both of them. So we're going to have to use is dashboard to change some of that stuff. So we're going to say, since the projection scale is not there, we're going to write projection scale and we're going to say is dashboard give it a 40 and 150. If it is dashboard, it's going to be 40. If it's not, it's going to be 150. And we're going to also going to change the projection translation. So it also moves left or right or top and bottom. And we're going to say, if it is dashboard, we're going to say it's 0 0.49, 0 0.6. And then we're also going to do 0 0.5, 0.5 if it's not. And these are all just numbers I tested on my own. So you can take it, you can change it as you want to. We're going to set the border width of 1.5. And we don't need Graticule. So we're just going to remove that. And the last thing is we're going to make the legends undefined if it's not the dashboard. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to enter and put the space over here before the array. Let's be very careful with the syntax here. Like that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, if it's not the dashboard, we are going to have a legend of this default value. So like that. And I think I misaligned this. So this closes this, this closes that. And that is, that's actually correct. And then, so we're going to say it's undefined if you don't have anything. So now if it is dashboard, then it's going to be undefined. So there's going to be no legend if there's no dashboard. Otherwise, we're going to set this. And let's just double check. Let me double check everything. I got this correct. Base name, value format. 
border color. A oh, border color should be white. So it's going to be 0, 0, 0, or sorry, FFF, like that. And that should be good to go. We're going to save that. Now we're going to create. In the scene, we're going to create a new folder, call it geography, pass in index.jsx, go to our pie chart, copy everything, or pie, basically the, the separate pie page. We're going to go to the geography page, paste that in, and we're going to change everything and call this geography chart. Same with over here. Copy all of that and say geography and hit save. And then from here, we're going to do the final thing is we're going to uncomment geography at the top, uncomment this out as well. And once we have that, let's take a look at what we have. And we have our geography chart. Perfect. There's one thing I wanted to add is going to be the border because the elements right here, it doesn't end up nicely. So we're going to add a border. And also the legend color is kind of messed up. So I'm going to go over here to the geography chart and I'm going to change the item text color. So this should be colors.gray100. We're going to go to item text color here on hover as well. We're going to set this to completely white. And also I'm going to go to index.jsx and I'm going to add a border here. So let's take a look. Okay, so border is going to be one pixel solid. I'm going to say colors.gray 100. So this is a shorthand for the butter border. And we're going to say border radius of four pixel. And that should do the trick. Oh, colors is not defined. So I need to add the colors here. So we're going to do what we normally do. We're going to copy the tokens and use theme as well. And as well as the hooks that are needed. And now we should have, oh, and we cannot resolve the theme. So this is in a different location. So we need to add two more dots and a slash. And I believe that should work. Perfect. And there you go. We have our perfect geography chart. Having done that, we have one last page that we need to finish, which is the dashboard. So this is going to be the most dense page out of that. But we now have all the elements that we need. We have the line chart, the bar chart, and the geo chart. And these circles, they're not the pie chart, by the way. They're just its own CSS. So this is an indicator that I built in CSS. And including, we have also the stat boxes right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by building these little progress circles, I'll call them, and these stat boxes. Because we are going to be reusing those components, and they're pretty common on this page. So we're going to have that as separate components. So we're first going to create a progress circle and call it JSX. And in here, we're going to import a few items, box, use, theme, from at MUI material. And then we're going to import tokens from slash theme. And we're going to say const progress circle. And we're going to give it some params with progress of default of 0 0.75, so 75%. And we're going to say a size of 40 as the default size. Oops, I kind of messed that up. And we're going to export default progress circle like so. And I'm going to do our normal theme. 
is theme. Like so cons colors equals tokens theme dot palette dot mode. And we're also going to set the angle. So the angle will be how much of the progress we have. So a little bit of mass, but you do progress times 360. So that determines the angle at which the circle should be. So we take the progress, for example, 75%. So you do 0 0.75 times 360. That gives you the angle that it should progress to. And we're going to return a box. And this box is actually going to be self-closing because all we need to do is apply some styles. So we're going to say SX. We're doing SX to make it a little more cleaner in this case. So we're going to say background and say radial dash gradient. And we're going to pass in colors dot primary 400. We're going to go to the next space and we're going to say 55% transparent, oops, transparent 56%. As well. So this, oh, I messed up. So if you look at this parens, closing parens, remove that. This parens should close the radial gradient. So we're creating a radial gradient on the first section. And what it's going to do, we're going to set the background as conic gradient as the next line. We're going to set transparent, zero degrees, and we're going to set angle. And see degrees, and we're going to say colors dot blue accent five hundred. And finally, we're going to say angle degrees, and angle degree three sixty degree. So now I'm not going to go too much in depth in what's happening over here, but basically, what this is doing is basically we're creating radial gradients, and we're kind of just modifying it so it looks like a progress circle. And we're taking a conic gradient, setting it from transparent at the beginning of the angle, or from zero to the angle we specified. And we're gonna set the color to blue accent from the desired angle to the rest of the 360. So this determines how much progress we are showing, and it shows the color that we want to set those to. And then we're also gonna set colors dot green accent as the end color. And let me move this tick to the bottom right here. So you can look this up. This is a way, this is a very simple way to create a progress circle with just CSS by itself. And then what we're going to do is create a border radius of 50% so it becomes a circle. And we're going to set the width of a size that we specified and pixel like that. And we're going to copy this. We're going to set the same thing for the height. And that should be our progress circle. So don't worry if you don't get this, but this is just a specific way to create progress circles. There's multiple ways to do this, but this is the very simplest one to do so. And the next component that we're going to create is going to be the stat box. And in the stat box, we're going to basically copy many of the things that we used. And we're just going to add typography. And also, we're going to import progress circle from what we just created. And we're going to create the stat box. So the stat box includes that entire box I showed you earlier. And this is going to take a title, subtitle, icon, progress, and the increase in percentage. And we're going to do theme equals use theme like we normally do, const colors, tokens, theme.palette.mode. And we're going to return a box.
And this box is going to have, so this is a lot of just layout stuff. So I'm just going to breeze through. So this is a lot of like tedious CSS and layout kind of stuff. So we're just going to breeze through this. So we're going to have a margin of left and right as well. We're going to set a box that has a display of flex with justify content. And we're going to say space between. And we're going to say box. And we're going to pass in icon. And we're going to say typography will be right underneath. And we're going to say variant of H4 with font weight of bold and an SX of color with colors dot gray 100. We're going to close the typography tag and pass in the title. And then we're going to place in another box and pass in our progress circle. And we can pass in the progress variable in there. And then we're going to add another box below that. And this is going to be the subtitle and the increase in percentage. And so if I go over here, say display, I'm just going to copy this, justify content space between right here. And then from here, I'm going to copy the typography I created earlier with some modifications, say variant of H5. We're going to remove the font weight. We're going to say SX colors green accent instead to make a different color. And we're going to pass in subtitle instead. And the last thing is we're going to copy the title again and pass in below to have a variant of H5, font style of italic. Oops, let me quote that. And say colors, green accent of 600 in this case. And this one is going to show the increase percentage. Oops increase yeah and then we're also going to export default stat box with that now we can finally do and work on our dashboard so let's close everything we're just going to open up dashboard component and from here we're going to import a lot of different things so we're going to import button icon button typography and use theme all from material UI. Then we're going to import tokens from the theme. We're going to import mock transactions from our data com our data file. Data mock data. We're going to import a number of icons. MUI, icons material, I'm going to say download slash download outlined. And we're just going to copy and paste this and just modify it. We need five icons. So we're going to say download, that should be email. And it should not be outlined in this case. Then we go to download outlined and we're going to say this should be point of sale. Then we have person add. And then finally we have traffic. And then we're also going to import all the charts that we have 
created for the dashboard. So import line chart from, and it should be, oh, it needs to go one level higher, components slash slash line chart. And we're going to copy and paste it for three different charts. So bar chart, geography chart. And actually let's create two more of these and we're going to import stat box and progress circle. And that should be all our imports. And then we're going to also pass in const theme equals use theme and const colors equals tokens theme dot palette dot mode like we normally do. And from here, now we can start adding what we need. So we have our display flex space between justify content. So we're going to add the download reports button right here. So we're going to say button. And in the button, we're going to add some styling. So SX equals background color colors dot blue accent of 700 color of colors dot gray 100 font size of 14 pixel font weight I forgot a comma so font weight of bold padding of 10 pixel and 20 pixel so we're going to save that we're going to go down into our button and we're going to give it a download outline icon sx is equal to margin right of 10 pixel and have that as a self-closing tag and we're going to say download reports so that should take care of the button on the left side, the right side. So that should be there. And then from here, we're going to go to the next line. And this is where we're going to have all the grid and the charts. So we're using flex or not flex. We're using charts or the grid system. So if you take a look, this is the final product. So what we can do is we can take a look. Let's bring up this class. So if you take a look, this is the grid that we have set up. I'm going to click this grid button on the HTML and you can see the grid that we have as a layout. So the grid system that I'm using is I'm using a grid system of 12 in this case. And the height of each one is going to be 140 pixel. And the gap between each item is going to be 20 pixel. So if you take a look, we're splitting it into 12 components. So if I remove this, this first one is going to be a span of three, 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 versus this one, which will be a span of, let's say three, six, nine. So this will be a nine and this will be, I believe four. Yeah, this is four. And then again, this will be four, four, four. So we have a system of grid template columns repeated 12 times with one fractional unit. So meaning it takes up one fractional space. And the grid system mix is very convenient and easy to use because we can just use something called span on each element to determine the grid. So with having that said, let's create the box and we're gonna paste display of grid. of grid and say grid template columns and we're going to say that's a repeat 12 
with one fractional unit for each space. We're going to give it grid auto rows and we're going to set that to 140 pixel and give it a gap of 20 pixel. And that should do the trick. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to do row one. We're going to have that as a comment and we're going to say box is going to be a grid column of span three. So that determines how big it is. And we're going to say background color of colors dot primary 400. And we're going to say this is a display of flex. We're going to do align items as center. And we're going to say justify content of center. And then we're also going to put the stat box we created. We're going to say stat box. And we're going to say title is equal to 12,361. This is just a random value. So we're going to say subtitle is equal to emails sent then the progress is going to be 0 0.75. The increase is going to be where's plus plus 14%. And we're going to say icon is going to be email, email icon. Like so, and we're going to say SX is equal to color, colors dot green accent 600 and we're going to give it a font size of 26 pixel so now this box could could have been part of the stat box instead but i decided to have the box so we can see the grid column in this component itself so we don't have a grid column directly on the stat box it's just more my preference kind of thing, even though the component, this component will get longer. So I'm just going to copy and paste the entire thing. And all we're going to do from here is going to be changing the values. So here, this one's going to be four, three, one, two, two, five. And we're going to say sales obtained. We're going to say 0 0.5 for the progress and plus 21%. We're going to copy and paste another one. I'm going to say three, two, 441, give it a new subtitle of new clients. Progress is going to be 30 and plus 5%. And one last one. This is going to be 1,325,134. Say traffic, traffic inbound. And progress is going to be 0.80 increase of 43%. Oh, I have missed that the icons have not been changing. So traffic icon over here, this should be person add icon and point of sale icon. And let me make sure everything's correct. Email point of sale person add traffic. So that's perfect. And then from here, we have the box. So we want this to be on the next line. And so from here, we're going to say this is row, row two. Let's see if it's working. So let's go to our page. And as you can see, we have everything. Some of the alignment is incorrect so let's actually fix that it seems like i messed up some of the flex options so let's let's go back and what i've noticed is that this box is not around the right container so move this box on line 24 i'm going to move it down to 40. so now that should be aligned correctly so now we got to fix the stat box so let's go to the stat box and what we're going to do is we're going to go to where this starts line 11. So this box is being closed around the entire thing, but it should be placed below line 24. So if we close that correctly, so now we have the stat box correctly aligned. 
And then from here, let's go to the dashboard. Once again, let's scroll down. We're going to go to row two. And then from here, we're going to start by creating a box. And we're going to say grid column. And it's going to span eight sections. So this is going to be the line chart. We're going to have a grid row, and that's going to span two height. Now, if you take a look over here again, so this spans two height, this spans eight from left to right. So there, we're going to have something that fits that section. And then we have background color, and we're going to say colors dot primary 400. And inside this box, we're going to say box, and we're going to give it a margin top of 25 pixel padding of zero and 30 pixel display of flex justify content space between and we're going to align items center and then from here this will be just like the header of the line graph so we're going to say a box we're going to give this a typography with a variant of h5 and font weight of 600 with the color of colors.gray colors.gray 100 and we have a typo there and we're going to say revenue generated and on the following line we're going to copy paste this with some modifications we're going to say h3 font weight of 500 instead green accent as a color and we're going to say 500 and this should be 59,342.32 so that takes care of the header save it it'll auto format and then we're going to add another box and we're going to give it an icon button and we're going to say download outlined icon and give it an sx of font size 26 pixel and give it a color of colors dot grain accent 500 and then below all this actually we should 163 so it should be on the next line after this in closing so we're going to say this will have a box and this is going to have the line chart and we're going to say is dashboard and this time it's going to be true and the box is going to have a height of 250 pixel margin of negative 20 pixel actually a margin left of negative 20 pixel so it's kind of a hack but we want to move the line chart to the left because it's a little aligned incorrectly so if we go to our page we have we have our chart now the spacing is a little messed up so let me see what the issue is okay so this will most likely be fixed once we get to the next section which is the next box where it has all the transaction list so we're going to create a box close that and let's actually comment this should be transactions just so we know where we're at. So we're going to say grid column is going to be span of four. Grid row is going to be span of two. I'm going to say background color is going to be colors dot primary 400. And we're going to say overflow auto. And inside this transaction, we're going to say box 
give it a display of flex, justify content space between align items, and it's going to be center. And we're going to say border bottom. And we're going to give it four pixel solid and colors dot primary 500. And then we're going to say colors equals colors dot gray 100, a padding of 15 pixel. I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back. We're going to look at this and we're going to give it a typography. And we're going to say recent transactions. And we're going to say color is equal to colors.gray100. Give it a variant of h5 and a font weight of 600. Okay, let me double check this correct variant h5, font weight 600. We have recent transactions. Perfect. And then from here, we're going to go to the next line and we're going to say mock. We're going to cycle through or map through our mock transactions that we imported from our data file transaction with an index. And what we're going to do is we're going to create an arrow function and create this own box here. So inside this box, we're going to close this. And we're going to give it a number of things. So we're going to give it a key and say transaction transaction dot txid dash i. Then we're going to say display of flex justify content of space between align items of center border border bottom and we're going to give it the same we're going to copy and paste this right here and a padding of 15 pixels so exactly the same as before and we're going to copy the typography so inside this box, we're going to have another box and we're going to close this. So it seems like sometimes when you're in a mapped array and you're writing this, the IntelliSense doesn't detect to close the elements. So that's why I'm doing it manually. So we're here, we have the typography. We're going to say, I copied this and I'm going to change this to green accent. And we're going to say this is 500. Variant is going to be H5. This is going to be transaction dot TX ID. And then we're going to copy and paste this one more time. This one will be simpler. So we're just going to remove variant and the font weight. We're going to say colors is going to be gray 100. And the transaction should get a property of user. Below this box, we're going to have another box and we're going to say this is the transaction transaction dot date and we're going to give it a color and we're going to say colors dot gray 100 and the final box I know this is quite long but we're almost there. So let's make sure we close that. We're going to say background color equals colors dot green accent and say 500. And we're going to say padding equals five pixel top and bottom, 10 pixel left and right. And then border radius of four pixel. And we're going to give it a transaction cost value and let's take a look 
ah, we have it. It's just not aligned correctly. Okay. And I realized there's a, there's a bit of a mistake that I've done. And so let me fix some of that. So on line 178, line T items, I messed that up, but that's not our problem right now. My problem that I did was that this box should be ending right here on 167, but the transaction section was included. So what I'm going to do is let's look at this carefully. Line 42, this ends all the way on line 223. So we're just going to remove that and we're going to move it up where the transactions starts. So let's add that. So if we do that, this, these two now are aligned correctly. So again, moving one of the closing tags down on 22, I believe it was 221, and then we move it to 167, and that is going to close it. And also, the margin left right here was incorrect, so that's why the alignment is incorrect here. So we're going to say that's margin 2, or margin top on line 164 above the line chart. And the last thing I want to say is line 149. This says font weight of 500, but this should be actually bold. So we go back and now we have everything fixed. This text is correct. These two are aligned correctly. The heights are properly aligned. So now we have row number two correctly done. Finally, let's go down to row three. So right below where you have the double prints and bracket and the box below it, this is where we can put row three. So I know, by the way, if I had more time or if we wanted to spend more time, you would separate out each row into their own components so you don't have such a long component file to deal with. But for the sake of brevity and time, we're not going to do that. So in row three, we're going to create box and we're going to say this is grid column of span four and grid row of span two. We're going to say background color is equal to colors dot primary 400. And we're going to give it a padding of 30 pixel. And like before, we're going to do typography and we're going to say variant H5 font weight of 600 and give it a text of campaign. And on the next line, we're going to say we have a box. This is going to have display of flex with the flex direction of column. We're going to align items to center. We're going to say margin top of 25 pixel. And in this, we're going to say progress circle, and this is going to have a size of 125. And since the default is 75%, that's exactly what we want. And we're going to say typography. We're going to say variant of H5 with color of colors.green accent 500. Let me lowercase to see. And we're going to say SX is equal to margin top of 15 pixel. And inside this typography component, we're going to say 48,352 revenue generated. And then I'm going to copy the typography of the campaign. And below, we're going to say includes extra miscellaneous expenditures and costs. We're going to move all of these properties. And this gives us the first, the first box that we need. And I'm going to go and just actually just going to copy this entire guy. And actually, let me, let me create a comment and just, just so we can separate that this is the final boxes to close. 
So row three is gonna include another section and we're just gonna copy all of this. Now the padding doesn't need to be 30 pixel for this one. And then we're gonna say this one is going to be sales quantity. And we're gonna say variant H5, font weight 600. We're also gonna give it a padding of 30 pixel at the top, 30 pixel to the right, zero at the bottom, 30 pixel to the left. And then right here, you can actually just remove majority of this. And we're gonna say box is gonna have a height of 250 pixel. And the margin top is going to be negative 20 pixel. And inside this box, we're gonna have a bar chart and we're gonna say is dashboard is true. And then we're gonna copy this one last time for the last box. And this is gonna be for the geography one. So span four, we're gonna have a padding of 30 pixel. Variant H5, we're gonna give it a margin bottom of 15 pixel. And we're gonna say geography based traffic. And the last box is gonna have a height of 200 pixel. And we're gonna say this is geography chart. And let's see how this worked. And there you go. We finally have our complete dashboard. Everything's perfect. So now we have light mode, manage team, invoices, all the tables, profile form with the calendar app, FAQ, bar chart, pie chart, line chart, and geography chart. Perfect. There you go. There's our final dashboard. We finished everything from start to finish with all these different packages. You used enterprise and production level applications and packages. We are using what you would use for work. I've used Material UI for work. I've used Nivo charts before. I've done data grid and all of these packages are amazing examples of things that you can customize for your production level application and they can be used for work and be put on your portfolio as a resume buffer. Now, if you look at this, we went through building this dashboard with all these charts and integrations and styling established. And then we went to these data grid tables. We have different variations of them. Then we went and wrote, used Formic to create our form with validation. We used the full calendar package with all the calendar application and functionality. Then we looked at the FAQ page with the React or Material UI accordion. Then we looked at the bar charts, pie charts, line charts, geography charts from the Nevo package. And we also themed everything with light and dark mode. And we created the React Pro sidebar with a lot of sidebar collapsing and functionality. We've done a lot and you have done a great job if you're following this to the T. Glad you finished this with me. There are a few things in the future that you can implement. There are a few buttons that we did not get to with notifications, we can add settings, we can have a profile user page if you want it, you can do search. We can also make this responsive. It's not as responsive as we would like, but for the sake of brevity, I did not include that. But if you want to, you can add that to be fully more featured. But you have done everything. I'm so glad that you stuck with me through this entire application and I hope you guys learned a lot. Now, if you enjoyed this content, please, please like and subscribe. I hope you stay subscribed for my future videos. I'm gonna be continually building a lot of these applications and I hope you stick it with me. See you next time.